I'm going to pray there is a live stream. Okay. Okay. Live, Mayor. Right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Newington Town Council regular meeting for Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 at 7 p.m. I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, if you are able. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Next item this evening is the roll call. Councilor Braverman. Here. Deputy Mayor Budraco. Here. Councilor Camillo. Here. Councilor Donahue. Here. Councilor Mankey. Here. <clears throat> Councilor Nagel. Here. Councilor Page. Here. Councilor Rada. Here. Mayor Del Buno. Here. Excuse me, Mayor. Here. Uh, may I just say something? It's not yeah. streaming. It's not on the oh. website. It, Thank it you for is, letting us know. It may take a second, but it is there. All right, James is just double checking. He said sometimes it takes a minute, but it should be there. Okay. Thank you, Susan, for letting us know. Um, oh, so you're if welcome. Any members if any members of the public are watching, we're just gonna wait a moment just to make sure that the technology is cooperating. Why would it do that? Say why I can't see it directly here, but it is live. Okay, so on our end, it is showing that we're streaming live. I do show a stop live stream. Otherwise, I would have received keys from the system. Oh, right. I do see that too. Okay. Well, we will continue. If not, you'll start hearing buzzing on all of our phones because usually people start texting if it's not working. So hopefully we're live. All right, we'll continue on right now. The next item on our agenda is approval of the agenda. And I believe we're looking to table um, the minutes of a previous meeting. So I'll entertain that motion. Yeah, I would move we table uh, item nine, minutes of the February 22nd meeting. I'll second. All right, so motion made by Councillor Mankey, seconded by Councillor Rada. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I'll just, um, for the public's sake, we are in a hybrid model uh, now. So many of us are in the room, but there are several members um, of staff and the council participating online through the Zoom app. So um, I will remind counselors too, to just unmute if you wanna be recognized um, for the vote as well. And if there are any tech glitches, we will apologize in advance and we will work on it as quickly as we can. So folks online and in person, if you notice anything, certainly bring it to our attention and we'll work on it as we go. This is a new format for us, the hybrid. So we're working on it. Okay. So we have our agenda. We are moving on now to public participation on anything. The public may participate either in person here in the room, you can come up to the microphone at the front table, or if you are in the Zoom application, you can raise your hand in the participants window or on your phone by dialing star nine. Um, and then we will recognize people in the order that they, um, that they appear on the screen and in person. So I see Ms. Mankey is with us this evening. And when it is your turn, if you would just state your name and address for the record. And we do have a three minute time limit mm -hmm. just for the sake of um, keeping on our agenda. Welcome Ms. Mankey. Leanne Mankey, 112 Northwood Road. Um, I'm also treasurer of the board of trustees at Lucy Robbins Wells Library. And I'm here today on their behalf. Um, I reviewed your newest version of the proposed permanent building commission. And um, we have, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, members of the town council for working with the library board to make it so that it was something that was palatable to the board. 
Um, we did take note of something that when we met with you in January, mm -hmm. uh, under commission composition, item four, the what we had understood to be included was an additional sentence after uh, no member appointed by the town council or by either party shall serve on any other elected or appointed board commission or position within the town of Newington. There was an, an added clause that said, with the exception of the Lucy Robbins Wells Library representation, which may be members of the board of trustees if the project involves the library or surrounding properties under the ownership and control of the board of trustees. Mm -hmm basically so that we would have owner representation in the town uh, committee. When I reviewed, um, or when we reviewed, I should say, the um, enclosed document in your agenda tonight, it does not include the statement that says, with the exception of Lucy Robbins Wells library representation, which may be members of the board of trustees, if the project involves the library or surrounding property under the ownership and control of the board of trustees, which basically, even though we get two members to vote, if that clause is not in the agreement, it means that basically owner representation is not on the committee. So we just want to bring it to your attention. Otherwise, I wanna thank you for all your work on this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I will, just say for the record that that was, I believe, just an omission when we uh, we had several drafts of the agreement that we had worked on over time. Um, and that is language that we will be talking about later. And so I'm glad you did bring it to our attention because it really was just unfortunately omitted inadvertently when we were um, redrafting. So thank you for bringing that to our attention. All right. Um, I do have one person online that raised their hand before. Is that okay? All right. So we have Ms. Mazzacoli. You are next. I don't have the function where I can. Okay. I'm right on that. Thank you. Hold on, Ms. Mazzacoli. Hi, uh, Sue Mazzacoli, 149 Harris Drive, Newington, Connecticut. Um, I'm actually simultaneously watching the town council and my grandson's basketball game. <laughs> uh, so the sound is, is off on the basketball game until he's on the court. I, I just wanted to let you know that I could see all of you, even when Sue said that she didn't think she could see you all. So that's the only reason I'm calling in. I could see all of you the entire time, and I also could see the town manager when he was speaking. So you're all set to go. Have a good Great night. Good. Thank you, Ms. Mazzacoli. Awesome. All, right. all right, let me just click here. All right, welcome, Ms. Lyons. Science 46 Elton Drive. Um, forgot to mention and had thought hadn't thought about it in a while, but when they mentioned building up on Cedar Mountain, I was just wondering if there's been any updates from the state of Connecticut as to what they plan to do with the Cedar Crest property. I know when John Salomon was here, Allison Clark, I think it was, was involved with the uh, Save Cedar Mountain uh, people and it was said at a couple of meetings that they were going to try and keep the town informed as to what was going on in that area. I think that's an important piece of par property up there. When I saw this land acquisition allocation of $20,000, I said, we're never gonna be able to buy anything up there, but maybe they can work out something where if it's not too much of a remediation that we can take over some of that um, area up on the mountain. And the only other thing I wanted to ask is whether or not there's going to be a state of the town presentation. I hadn't heard anything. So, okay, that's it. I think I'm going to go home and phone in on Zoom and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Any others, any other members of the public that would like to come forward to address the council? I don't see any hands up in the Zoom application right now. Anyone else in the room? Okay, I think we are all set with public participation then. We will move on now. Did anyone receive any email correspondence? I don't believe so. I, re I received one, but it wasn't for the record. It was just notifying us of some things. Okay, we're all set with that. Next item is remarks by counselors on public participation. Deputy Mayor Bedrago. Um, actually, I was gonna um, do this to the, the council liaison reports, but um, at the EDC meeting, Last week, the Chamber of Commerce um, indicated that there will be a state of the town meeting, and it's going to be on um, March 30th at eight o'clock at Indian Hill Country Club. 
Um, so watch their website. I mean, we'll try and keep you informed too, but watch their website for um, ticket information. Thank you. Any other counselors? Councilor Page? Thank you, Mary. I just want to thank Ms. Lyons for bringing up the Cedar Crest property. I haven't actually thought about that in a while, so thank you for that. And I would like to talk more with my colleagues here and with other leadership in the town and the town manager to see what the possibilities um, the are with that. Commerce, we, uh, we need to be careful with obviously taking on a liability um, there. We need to think it through. That's a big responsibility, but if there are opportunities for some development that is a positive thing for the town. I think we should talk about it. Thanks. Thank you. Any other counselors? Yeah, I know that um, Mr. Chapman has been in contact with the state regarding that property um, for several months now, if not longer. Um, so we can certainly um, ask for an update and perhaps in the future, um, Mr. Chapman, if you would consider providing the council with an update on that and even the Keeney property, which I know is a private property, but if you know of anything that's going on there, um, that would be great. I know that's not ours to develop. So, um, but if you know of anything, you could give us an update at a future time. Sure. Thank you. All right. We will move on now to consideration of old business. And the first item this evening is a health update regarding COVID-19. Mr. Chapman. Yes, I'm, I'm pleased to report that uh, we are now in the yellow uh, as of last Thursday. Um, we've lifted all prohibitions and restrictions from all of the buildings. Uh, we do ask that people still wear their masks, but not required. Um, so if we continue to go in the right direction, then COVID will become history. If it turns around, then we'll have to impose some of the restrictions back on. But right now, uh, no masks are required anywhere. And the buildings are unlocked and open. And each uh, department, library, senior center, town hall, and so forth, they have their own operating hours. And I believe that the parks and rec is full steam ahead. So uh, let's hope it all works out. That's all. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments by counselors? No, thank you to everyone who's worked on this, including Megan Mankey and the town manager. Forever. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. It's forever we've been working on this. Yeah, yeah, a lot of work. And let's hope we just continue in the right direction. All right, I don't see any hands up. Okay. This is a very different format, guys. So as you want to be recognized, we're just getting, this is really our first real meeting in here. So feel free to just lean forward or, you know, and I'm, I'm going to do my best. But if I miss someone, speak up because I'm doing my best to make sure I get everybody. All right. And it is for the public's sake. It's a little strange for us here because we're looking here at, at our materials, but the cameras are way up. So Ms. Lyons wasn't wrong in her comments about um, some of the, the tech stuff in the room. It's a little... Um, different and certainly gonna take some time to get used to. So if you're looking at the top of our heads, I apologize, it's a little strange. All right. <laughs> fix your you hair. have to fix um, your hair. <laughs> me, and, me and Mitch are just providing extra light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next item is the 150th anniversary steering committee report. And I'm looking at our attendees. Do we have? Frank Alina wasn't there. available, but she was nice enough to provide us with a report, which I can okay. put on screen for you. Um, so I'm happy to read it in. The never ending saga of the 150th continues. At the advice of the town manager and health director, we once again postponed our celebration at Indian Hill. It looks like the only dates are at the end of the summer. I know they were looking at August or September. Um, our next scheduled event will take place on Saturday, June 11th. Mark your calendars to get ready for the biggest town wide tag sale Newington has ever seen. Uh, we'll be working in conjunction with the GFWC, and I wish I could tell you what that meant. Um, I know it's a women's club, mm -hmm. I want to say out of Newington and Wethersfield. Mm -hmm. um, they're sponsoring it as well with the townwide tag sale. They're going to be collecting addresses and providing that map of interest to it. We'll also be supplying that under a single permit to the police department. Uh, it will coincide with a busy weekend with parks and rec re recreation events as well. So hopefully everybody will be able to get all around town and see a lot of different events. Uh, later in June, they're going to be hosting a movie night inside the community center. Um, that'll be halfway to holidays, we're going to call that. And there'll be a pajama party and indoor screening with, I believe they were looking at a holiday movie, which classic they haven't decided on. They have to look at the licensing. And as always, um, they're welcoming anybody to stop by their meeting the first Thursday of every month. We start at 6.30 every, every uh, evening 
and um, we will be on Zoom for that as well. Okay, great, thank you. <clears throat> if there are any questions of councils, we can certainly collect those questions and get them to Ms. Franklin if anybody has anything. Okay, all right. So thank you, Ms. Franklino, if you are watching for providing us with the report, we appreciate the work you're doing on that commission. We know it's been extremely challenging due to COVID. Um, so we're glad you're still, still working on getting those events coming out now at least. We're, we're really thankful for that. All right, next item is the ordinance amendment for chapter 21 voting <coughs> districts. 121, sorry, thank you. Um, we have had, um, we had a presentation by the registrars of voters at our last council meeting. Um, we have the charts posted around town at the senior center, the library, um, Morrison Community Center, and in front of the registrar's office in town halls. So we've had those up for a few weeks now um, so that the public would have access to those as well in order to view them. And we did hold a public hearing on the subject last evening uh, to make sure that the public was able to view the presentation and have an opportunity to weigh in on the subject as is done with any ordinance change uh, by town charter. We have to hold that public hearing to make sure we're getting input from the public on the topic. Um, and there was lots of input along the way on this topic. We definitely heard what the public had to say and um, many changes were made along the way to accommodate um, both what the council requested as well as um, the public. And so we are um, this evening looking to take action on the proposal that the registrar has brought forward um, at the public hearing last night which um, if we do have in our packets this evening, it does have um, seven voting districts. It addresses the needs of the state reapportionment, which is really what sparked um, this project to start. Um, the state reapportionment required that we look at our municipal districts to make sure that we are um, realigning them appropriately with the general assembly districts. And then in addition to the changes that were necessary for the reapportionment, the registrars did sit, make some um, changes to um, help make the districts align better with um, the streets in town so that there's one street dividing each district um, to make it a little cleaner um, in terms of the purposes of which voting districts people would vote at. Um, so we do have in our packets, it indicates district one will be Mortenson Community Center, district two will be Ruth Chafee Elementary School, district three, Anna Reynolds Middle School, District 4, Elizabeth Green Elementary School. District 5, John Patterson Elementary School. District 6, John Wallace Middle School. <laughs> District 7, Martin Kellogg Middle School. Um, the uh, registrars did review last evening at the public hearing um, the attempts that they will be making to get the word out to everyone who was affected by the changes. Um, uh, Ms. Avey, I'm gonna look at you to help me remember some of the changes, uh, some of the ways you're doing it. So there is gonna be mailers going out. Mailers is a state mandate. Right. The state statute. Do you want to come up just so, um, otherwise I'm just going to be echoing you if you don't mind. So are. mailers are required by state mandate, as well as I know you mentioned greeters <coughs> at the polling sites to make sure before people um, wait in line or even get into the building, they can kind of check and see to make sure they're in the right location based on the new changes. Yes, we're going to utilize greeters at um, some of the polling locations. And we're also going to use our Facebook page, the town's website, news flashes, and um, Superintendent DeMeo from Parks and Rec has said we can use any of his um, events to promote the new districts. And Superintendent Brummett also says we can put signs up on the school grounds to promote the changes. And the chamber says we can use their um, waterfall festival event to um, use the changes and both party chairs will also at the extravaganza, we will be present as the registrar of voters. Um, the four of us will be present, but both party chairs have said they will help um, at their events too. And I know last night at the public hearing, there were a few questions raised that we did address last night, but I thought that if the questions had been brought up that perhaps other members of the public would be interested in those answers as well. Um, so one of the members of the public asked where District 8 voters would be voting. The, so the current District 8 is now going to be part of District 5, five which is at John Patterson <laughs> Elementary School. So anyone who was in District 8 will now be at John Patterson as their district. Um, another question that was brought up was um, kind of why this uh, project started and that was in, in response to the state reapportionment. That's kind of what sparked us to look at the 
municipal districts and realign them with state and then uh, general assembly districts and then uh, some changes on our own. And there was a question also about the condos. We can't take um, any new condos into, um, into this project of redistricting until someone actually moves in and registers, and then they will be placed in their correct district. Right. Okay, and then there have been questions along the way about a uh, standalone referendum. I'll just mention it because I know it's been a question. It is not part of this proposal. It was basically brought up by the registrars just in a effort for transparency, but the statute is specific that um, a referendum, if brought up, is approved and the date is set by the council but ultimately the registrars statutorily have the right to decide where the referendum vote takes place, how many locations, all of that is completely at the registrar's discretion based upon the statute. So that is not part of the polling district proposal on the table tonight or the ordinance change or anything that this council has control over. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear because that has been brought up. Um, so I think we've covered, is there anything else? Right. With the um, uh, primary, also the, the yeah. town committee primaries. Okay, so town committee primaries are also at the discretion of the registrar to determine location and how that'll be handled. Correct. Okay. All right. Any... And maybe, maybe we could maybe we could do when you get some graphics together, we could run it on NCTV too. Okay. Thank you. Maybe we we'll do a show, me and you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great idea. There you go. All right, great. folks. I just have yes. one question, Mayor. Um, I don't want to let this sort of fall off the radar, which is the very good points that both of the registrars made about the challenges in securing help at the polls and um, on voting day. And so I'd like to just continue to have a conversation about how we as a council can support you and how we can get the word out to solicit more folks to, to be working in this critically important endeavor. Mm -hmm. So thank you thank yeah. for raising our awareness on mm -hmm. that. I know in the past it's been extremely challenging. Many of us have reached out to friends and family and on Facebook and, and it was still really challenging. So we can certainly brainstorm if there are any other ways we can support. We've yes, been some to. public did um, email and give some very good suggestions that Marie and I have already started reaching out okay. to some of the um, suggestions. Great. That's great. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kim. Yes, Kim. Uh, we also have help at the high school with a teacher that gives us a lot of Oh, good. From the children, but you have to remember we interview these poll workers before we accept <laughs> their application because they have to explain first before they even go to class what's going on. Right. Because usually you'll tell them and say, $16, hours, I only put $300. Yeah, no right. way. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> so I'm not sure if the public can hear her because she's not by a mic. But um, you think it picked up? Okay, all right. So hopefully it picked up. But Ms. Fox was just saying that there are um, interview processes in place to make sure the poll workers are prepared for what the job really entails before they even go to the training. Um, so there is quite a process in place. All right, so we do have a motion in our packet. You have a question it's just, first? It's not a question, it, it's, an, it's an edit. Okay, uh, Councilor Rada, go for it. Um, We're gonna in call our, it Councilor our, Edit. <laughs> In, in our in our packet, uh, the chapter uh, 121 voting districts where it lists the polling places, uh, just to make an edit, District 3, it's Anna Reynolds Elementary School, not Anna Reynolds Middle School. Oh, and it's, and it's, it's correct in any other places that I saw, but I just wanted oh, to right. fix that. We'll fix that. Thank you. Well, you're busy. Once. Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> we'll place that. Yes, Deputy Mayor Pedrego. Yep. I just have a question of the registrars. Um, you have a very good um, communication strategy worked out, but um, I know a lot of times when I get mailings, um, sometimes, quite frankly, I toss them. Um, for the people who are definitely going to be impacted by this change, is there a way you can like stamp the envelope on the outside that says, read this important or something? We do have envelopes that um, say something to the effect of read, don't lose your voting rights or something to that effect. And we would use those um, envelopes. We've also thought of doing postcards with a, a color, a bright color. So that's something that 
catches your eye that you might be like, oh, let me look at this. Well, the communication that goes out globally, and, and I think there's got to be a really targeted one for people who really are going to be impacted. So if you can just keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, councilors, would someone read the motion into the record for us? I can do it. Sure, Councilor Mankey. Resolved, the New England Town Council hereby approves the amendment to the New England Code of Ordinances, chapter 121, voting districts, as recommended by the registrars of voters, a copy of the ordinance and the voting districts maps shall be attached to this resolution. The approved district shall be effective March 9, 2022. Now, now, there's, there's some exceptions to this rule of Second. priority. Okay. Uh, the, did you finish the motion? I did not, but All I right, was- So Council Mankey's gonna finish the motion. Go ahead, God was talking to you, so I got <laughs> Welcome um, to the world of technology. District shall be effective March 9th, 2022 for Connecticut General Statutes 9-169B. Thank you. And is there a second? Second. Second. Yeah. Seconded by Councillor Nagel. I'm not sure who I heard first. There was a lot <laughs> going on there. Seconded by Councillor Nagel. All right. Any further discussion, Councillors? Seeing none, of those of you that are online, if you would unmute for the vote. For the All right. Very All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next item is Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation Grant Award. So this is some wonderful news. Um, I would invite the folks from the firehouse that firehouses fire department that are here tonight. If you'd like to come up, um, you're more than welcome to join us for this. Um, <clears throat> from Firehouse Subs online as well. Oh. Jackie Kodos is here. Wonderful. So we also have Jackie Kodos from Firehouse Subs with us. Welcome. Um, so we are here tonight. Uh, we have before us a motion um, to be able to um, accept the grant, essentially, of $47,155. I'll read the motion. It's a change of the amount. Oh, there's a change of amount. Thank you. All right. So why don't we go ahead and have Councillor Mankey read the motion in first, and then we'll move into discussion. Go ahead, Councillor Mankey. I'm just making sure else is going to be talking to me while I'm reading it. Good tech. <laughs> town Council hereby authorizes the town manager or his designee to accept the Firehouse Subs Pop Public Safety Foundation Grant Award for the Newington Volunteer Fire Department in the amount of $41,114.50 for a Hearst Cutter. Hearst Cutter. Combo tool, ram, strong arm kit, and accessories. A copy of the executed grant shall be attached to this resolution. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councillor Rada. Okay, we're going to hold off on a vote until we discuss and hear from you all. Um, so, welcome, Ms. Kodos. Thank you so much. Um, so, on behalf of Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation, it's an honor to be with you tonight. Um, our foundation has granted over $65 million worth of life-saving equipment and really all with the mission to support our first responders in making our communities safer, including Newington here with this grant um, known as the Jaws of Life. So knowing that your first responders will have the tools they need to respond to car accidents and get folks out as quickly as possible exactly what our foundation is all about. Um, I just want to say um, on a personal note, this is very special to me as well. Um, I was told when our foundation board of directors approved this grant. Um, my grandparents um, lived in Newington for their whole lives and raised my father. Or my Grandmother worked at John Patterson and my grandfather was the fire commissioner for the Newington Fire Department for 12 oh, years, uh, John Guttins. And um, wow. I grew up in Weathersfield, so I'm here and uh, presenting to you today, uh, but I just have to say on a personal note as well, I've been working for this foundation in Florida for about 10 years now and um, just so happy that you'll have the tools you need. <clears throat> That's really incredible. And thank you so much for the work that you and your foundation do. This is really incredible work. $65 million is 
an amazing amount of money to be putting back into communities uh, to ensure that our first responders have what they need. And we are so very grateful in our community, but I wanna make sure and give you folks an opportunity. We have some of our um, fire commissioner and our fire um, chief here to um, discuss. You're good. Okay, you guys are representing, go ahead. Assistant Chief LaPierre is with us and Commissioner um, Brian Whalen is with us. We can't be more than grateful for uh, what firehouse subs did for us. Um, Chief LaPierre, we try very hard in the fire department to search for things that we can do to save the town money. And Chief LaPierre, along with Sonia from the grant writing company that the town has, found this grant and applied for it. And we're, we're overexcited. And it couldn't really come at a better time with the tragedies we had last week in the town of Newington. And that tragedy we had to call in Weathersfield to come help us because we just didn't have the equipment to go around. Mm -hmm. So this comes at the most opportune time and firehouse subs, we can't thank you enough. And I knew John Gubbins. I was a good friend of John Gubbins. Um, he was a great person for the town, a great fire commissioner. And um, just hearing that today, it's, it's very heartfelt and um, thank you, uh, thank you, <laughs> can't thank you enough. Thank you, yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. Well, it was a pleasure to work with Sonia and Firehouse Subs. And again, I also knew Commissioner Governments very well, worked with one of his sons and uh, a great family, put a lot of uh, effort into anything that Newington did, the whole family did, I believe. They were bus drivers. His wife was a bus driver. Um, so. Wow. It's nice to hear those roots from Newington spread pretty far out to Florida where you are now. Wow. So I uh, love that. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm glad you guys mentioned to uh, Sonia from Sonic Grant Writing because they have, yep. boy, have they more than paid for their they services. Have. They really um, have. And they're working on more time. for us. So mm -hmm. you know. yeah, we have two other grants in process. Wonderful. Yeah, exactly. So let's hope. We're as fortunate as we are with this first one. Absolutely. All right, folks. So we have. Oh, go ahead. I would just want to thank you, you folks, for for applying for that. I mean, it's above and beyond. It it, it does save the town money and it gets us the equipment we need. This is all extraction equipment. These are the, the jaws of life. Life saving CBM. jaws CBM. of life. Okay. Yep. I just wonder what what a strong arm kit was because it sounds kind of <laughs> like you're pulling something. Um, what the strong arm? I'm sure. Chief yeah. Lapierre, you can explain. It's just, it's just a, it's a point they put in so we can push from. Uh, oh, okay. It goes with the ram. So okay, so it's a like yeah, a, it's okay. a it's an attachment for, for using one of those tools. Oh, cool. All these are the newest technology. Uh, they're all cordless electric, you know, so they're all battery operated tools. Um, and so it's it'll give us the same tools on both the rescue and the tech, Excellent. and uh, allow us to move some of the other tools down to give us a little more range but i think one of the key things that was noted when we did this grant is the amount of increase we've had in motor vehicle accidents in this town in the past year when we pulled up data because uh firehouse grant needed the data of why we were putting this in and when you pull up the, the records that we had to see the increase in vehicle extrication as just one call right mm -hmm. segment um it's really a, a, as commissioner Wayland said it's just so many accidents in this town mm -hmm. but it still took your initiative to go ahead with with a grant writing company to to do that right. and i, well, I yeah. appreciate your your staff's commission uh, initiative to do that it's the only way we're going to get some of the equipment i mean obviously we know budgets are tight right and we want to get this but as i was talking to the to the uh, vendor today because there was a, a question in the dollar figures um, from what we put in and what we were awarded. And we just wanted to get an answer in case it was one tonight. And uh, I guess Firehouse Subs has a special pricing and they work directly with her. Okay, good. Oh. Um, Excellent. So, and as I told him, I said, it's a good thing we got the grant because for him and for us, because we get the tools, he gets the sale. Right. And we wouldn't, it wouldn't have fit in this year's budget. It just wouldn't have. It wouldn't fit, yeah. yeah. But, but thank you for your reference. I appreciate it. But we appreciate it. Deputy Mayor Bedrago. No, I just want to um, echo what was said. Um, 
first of all, the fact that, you know, you, you realize that, um, you know, again, thinking outside the box that this is equipment you needed, you, you knew the situation in the town's finances and to possibly go for a grant working with Sonia. Um, I think that's great. And let's hope for good luck with the other two that you're applying for and more in the future. Um, but Jackie um, from Firehouse, um, what a wonderful way um, to give back to a community. It's a, it's a very unique niche. Um, there, uh, there are many ways, you know, to give back, um, but this is, to me, is something very unique and special, plus tied to kind of your, your name and your product. And I actually went online today because I was going to celebrate by having a firehouse sub, but there's <laughs> none in Connecticut, I don't think. There, there was I one know. In there's one in Glastonbury, so I want to personally invite you, go to your um, <laughs> the head, the corporate head, and we have plenty of room on the Burlington and Turnpike or the center of town, or there there's, go. just yeah. give us a call, and um, we'll, we'll all be we'll there. We'll hook you up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I was so disappointed. Um, the Bristol, Connecticut location was the remaining location, and it closed. Oh, yeah. really. So we're hoping to have more restaurants, um, and, you know, your community having a restaurant in the past in Glastonbury and in Bristol, the community members did donate and support our cause. So to see this come <clears throat> is amazing. Um, over 250,000 uh, has been awarded in the state of Connecticut so far. So we hope to continue growing and doing more. So, you know, uh, pass the word on to your uh, development marketing people that we, we want you here. <laughs> Yeah, nobody absolutely. Can with I'd be happy nobody to. compares with the Berlin Turnpike, right? Yeah. The Berlin Turnpike is yes. the place to be. <laughs> All right. Um, so we do have our motion on the table. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Page. There, real quick, nope. I just wanted to say thank you very much and thank you to Firehouse Subs. And I'll always say this when you folks or our police or our EMTs present that when I heard about the tragic crash on Cedar Mountain, uh, I always think of you and I think of the trauma that you experience in, I can't even imagine, in coming upon a scene like that. And I hope you and all the women and men who serve in our EMT and fire and police services are doing what you can to take care of that uh, stress-related situation. Because <clears throat> it's, it's beyond imagination what you have to do with. And, and you're right there and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. We're always thinking of our guys and that after an incident, it, it, you think about it at the incident, but the time to think about it is when you get back to the firehouse. And the first thing we do, um, and kudos to Mayor Beth, she called me Sunday night to make sure all of our guys, our firefighters, our, our women our, and our men, we're all taken care of that we're all set. And, you know, being a firefighter for over 40 years in town doesn't hit you right away, but a couple of weeks down the road, it could you know, really slam you. And we, we deal with our guys all the time with it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, people forget. I think um, you hear Newington Volunteer Fire Department and you think, well, they respond to fires. You know, that's what they do. But you respond to so much more than that. And the things that you have to see in the line of duty is uh, something that we can't even imagine, but we are always here to support you with whatever you need to do what you do. So, Thank you. Um, and we're so grateful for the partnership with, um, with people like Firehouse Subs for, for helping us to make sure that you can get what you need. Because like you said, funds are tight. So um, to have this extra support is tremendous. We're really grateful. Just a little thing I wanted to bring up about the Jaws of Life. So we all we all know it as the Jaws of Life, but how the how the name came about was pretty interesting. Um, the Jaws of Life came out of NASCAR racing, and that's when it was first developed for the race car track. And um, the first time they had it at a track, there was an accident, and they cut the driver out of the car. And the guy standing next to it, next to the car told the guy using the tool goes, wow, that guy just escaped the jaws of death. And that's how it became the jaws of life. So pretty interesting story how it came about. Yeah, I love that. All right. All right, counselors. So I think we're ready to take our vote. Those online, if you could unmute and be ready for the vote. All right. Counselor Camillo, if you're able to unmute, I'm not sure if you've stepped away. All right, we'll go ahead with the vote right now. I have eight. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 8-0.
Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you, you again, again Jackie. Firehouse. We appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Thanks. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Well. you. All right, folks. Next item this evening is the draft job description for the deputy assessor um, classification A7. Uh, we did receive this at our last meeting for review, so we are looking to take action this evening on it. Um, Mr. Chapman, do you want, is he still on? I don't see him still on. Well, he may be having some tech issues, who knows. All right, so counselors in your packet, and um, we did review this um, last week, is the okay. updated. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. The job description for the deputy assessor, um, the department is finance. The classification is a seven and we are looking to adopt this this evening. It is really just an update. We had been provided with the previous, um, uh, job description, which I made a comment last meeting. It looked like it was done on a mimeograph. Yeah. Um, that's how old it was. So, um, it's time to update for sure. Um, so counselors, um, who would like to go ahead and read the motion in Councilor Nagel. Uh, first, I'd like to mention that this is a process that's been going on for several years of updating job descriptions and make them more accurate to the work that each of the individuals uh, do. It's not only what was done many years ago in technology, but also uh, tasks that have been added for them. So we have a clearer idea as to well, who is the appropriate candidate and also how much uh, uh, valuable the uh, uh, those who have these jobs are in the work that they are doing at the moment. And I'll, I'll read this. Okay. Resolve the Newton Town Council hereby approves the amendment to the classification and pay plan by approving a revised job slash position description for the deputy assessor A-7 position as recommended by Keith Chapman, town manager in his capacity as personnel director. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Donahue. All right, folks, any questions or discussion on this? All right, seeing none. Anyone online, you're unmuted. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Councillor Camillo has stepped away. Next item is the draft, oh, I'm sorry, is the equipment sharing agreement, multi-town equipment cooperative. And so this again was discussed at our last meeting. Um, the towns of Newington and Rocky Hill are proposing to enter into a multi-town agreement for the purchase of a John Deere tractor and Alamo boom mower. Uh, this purchase would be made through the use of the American Rescue Plan Act, the ARPA funds. Um, as required under Connecticut General Statute 7-339C, um, we as the council will need to authorize the town manager to, to execute the agreement. Additionally, the town council will also be requested to um, approve the use of the ARPA funds as we have previously done. Uh, we do have the um, resolution in our packet this evening. Who would like to go ahead and read that in? I'll again okay. Go right ahead, Dr. Nagel. Resolve, the Town Council hereby ratifies the interlocal interlocal, pardon me, agreement between the town of Newington and the town of Rocky Hill to the acquisition of a town deer tractor and Alamo boom. The town manager, Pete Chapman, is hereby authorized and directed to execute the agreement on behalf of the town of Newington. A copy of the executed interlocal agreement shall be attached to this resolution. Be it further resolved, the Newington Town Council hereby authorizes the purchase totaling $167,249.44, which shall be equally divided by each town in the amount of $83,624.72 by utilizing American Rescue Plan Act funds for the purchase of the referenced equipment listed above. Thank you, is there second. a second? Second by Councilor Mankey. Any further discussion on this? I know this was one of the items that we were looking to um, be able to, the boom on this will allow us to um, do some of the remediation around um, some of the bodies of water in town that we have. Um, oh, Rob is here, sorry. Hi, Rob. Um, we do have Rob Hillman with us, so if we do have questions, he is here to answer if we need it. Deputy Mayor Bedrako. Um, do you know if this has been approved already by Rocky Hill? Have they? Yes, it has they, been. Yep, they've already put everything in place, so they're ready to, uh, to move on as soon as council approves. Okay, super. Thank you. 
Councilor Mankey? And, and this would, would also do the waterways at Millbrook? Yes, so that, that's the, we traditionally used to rent one from, I uh, borrow one from Prospect or rent from, from Acorn, I don't remember, Acorn Rentals. And right. Acorn went out of business. So uh, we've unfortunately not been able to do it in the past few years. So Piper Brook is one of the ones that's a DEP mandate that we haven't gotten to in a few years. Okay. So we were able to get to it this year, but yeah, so it'll be assisting us with the uh, cleaning of the waterways. And it'll also help the parks department do a lot of the roadside mowing that they just can't get to with some of their smaller equipment. Okay. So it's been multifaceted and it's going to be a great, it's a great opportunity between Newington and Rocky Hill to get such a nice piece of equipment that basically half the cost. So this is kind of one of those things you see on the highway. Sometimes a big boom comes off exactly. of the mower on the end yep. and it just chews all the, yep. the underbrush down and so spits the it out. State, the state that you yeah. Road right. Road yeah. It's going to be very similar to that. Councilor Page? I know nothing about this, so I'm going to ask this. Does this in any way affect um, rising waters or flooding uh, in those areas? No. Or it would just be more. Maintain the vegetation on the banks. It. And uh, and the uh, and the slopes okay, basically yeah that was any, any impact no that would be more of a uh, dredging 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 yeah unfortunately we don't have the equipment for that you're talking larger shovels and things like that um, and we um, we have to we can contract most of that work out. overgrowth and things. yes okay basically. thank you Councilor Nagel so this also helps you to get to places that would either be more difficult to get at or to places that you've been able to get to. Uh, and it would not impede upon private properties where other methods might. Is that right? Correct, yes. Okay. It's, it's a larger piece of equipment, a four-wheel drive piece of equipment, and we're able to actually get in the waterways, um, where our smaller equipment is we're reaching it from the tops of the banks, where this we can actually get in the waterways and reach the lower sections of them. So it's okay. something we like to do in the winter months, too, when the ground is frozen. So. Okay, thank you. Any other council comment or question? All right. All right, folks, so we have the motion on the table. We have our second. So um, those of you online, if you can unmute for the vote. All right, and all those in the voluntary. So remember that. Yeah. Okay. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. All right, next item this evening is the Municipal Solid Waste Disposal Services RFP. And I think, Mr. Hillman, in my brain, that's what you're here for. So I apologize yes, for not acknowledging Jeff you earlier. You. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jeff. We have Jeff Barron with us as well. I feel the need to mention that because I can't tell what the public can see, if they can see you guys or not. So I keep mentioning who's here. Okay. They will the cameras automatically swap for us. Yeah, I can't see it up there, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so before us this evening is the um, consideration of the municipal solid waste disposal services. We did go out to RFP um, in a joint fashion with the towns of Newington, Weathersfield, and Rocky Hill, all three, um, looking to consider um, how to handle our uh, waste management piece uh, with the knowledge that Mira, some things are changing with Mira. Um, and so that being said, I'll turn it over to you to give us all the information you have. Okay. Um, uh, Initially, it was identified that the cost of Mira might be going up to a significant amount per ton. Um, the dollar figure of $116 uh, was, was mentioned, and that's a sizable increase. So the three town managers got together and decided that they wanted to do a, an RFP uh, for municipal solid waste disposal services. And this is uh, not who collects your trash, but where it is taken and how it is disposed of. So um, they did that and we got a number of responses back. Um, initially we thought we might only get two or possibly three, but we ended up with uh, six or seven, depending on whether or not you want to count the engineering, uh, was an engineering firm that submitted and we did not go with their recommendation. But um, the there were six other trash firms who did submit proposals, and um, three of them were interviewed by the three towns. And um, we had some recommendations, and I'll start off by apologizing for the six-page memo that you got. I don't like <laughs> to issue memos that are that lengthy, but this is trash, and it is a somewhat complicated subject. So um, again, I will apologize. It, I didn't feel as though I could do it justice in, in one page. So um, 
And there is a recommendation. Actually, there are two issues coming before the council. The first is whether or not to stay in Mira. And we are recommending that you not remain in Mira for financial reasons. Okay. And that would be a business decision. But again, if you choose to remain in Mira, then you don't need to make the second decision, which is to award the RFP. And if you choose to leave Mira, then you do need to make a, a decision to award the RFP to one of the firms. And we are recommending that uh, an award be made to uh, CWPM out of Plainville. And, um, we got proposals, we interviewed the firms, and we felt as though CWPM had the best set of options, best proposal. And so that's what we're recommending that, uh, that we go with. And um, one of the difficulties here is in explaining the uh, recyclables and how the recyclables are collected and how they are figured. Um, there's a rather, what I would consider to be a somewhat complicated formula. And if you don't understand it, don't feel bad. Um, but it involves things such as the threshold, uh, which is uh, the base rate for to process recyclables. And it's also based on the amount of contamination that you have. New England's contamination rate is normally between 10 and 15 percent. That helps you any. There's, uh, there's also something called the ACR, which is the average commodities rate uh, or average commodity revenue. And you subtract that from the threshold. And um, so what we used for a projection is $91. That's sort of a worst case scenario. And it's not truly a worst case scenario because it is a floating rate. So conceivably you could have something $91, but we don't think it'll ever get to be that bad. There is a market for recyclables. We feel that there will always be a market for recyclables. It won't be a tremendous market. It won't be like it was a few years ago. It is controlled significantly by events in China as we understand it. So um, it's not something that we have any control over. But nonetheless, uh, we feel as though the, um, the rates in the CWPM proposal, uh, when CWPM and Murphy Road, who were the two leaders, uh, they submitted the two best proposals, when they met with the three towns, the three towns indicated that we favored a certain amount of um, budgetary, a fixed budget, if you will. We didn't like, of, we didn't care for the floating rate that we had, right. uh, we had gotten from them. Mm -hmm. And um, so CWPM felt as though they could not offer more than one year on a fixed rate. And Murphy Road came back with a, um, with a different proposal that um, charged more per ton for the tipping fee, but didn't charge anything for recyclables. And if you're willing to pay the higher tipping fee, then they'll be happy to, uh, to charge you uh, $0 for the recyclables. And um, when we sat down and crunched the numbers, we still felt that CWPM gave you the better rate. Um, CWPM had, initially a proposal on the table for a floating rate for four years for the recyclables. And we felt that their floating rate that they used, they were using 2021 data, which was the latest available to them. But we felt that that was a little on the optimistic side. And so we couldn't really recommend to you that $53 or $58 is what you would end up paying a ton for recyclables. So they came back with a fixed rate of $75 per ton, a, a fair number. And then if you were to accept their proposal, their uh, floating rate, we, we plugged in a $91 figure. And um, if you have a different figure that you care to use, your figure is probably just as good as mine. Uh, but 
nonetheless, we used $91 and that came from the tables that CWPM provided to us. And given our rate of contamination, um, $91 was greater than any of the uh, rates that they were offering or they were charging at any time during 2021. Now that isn't to say again that things couldn't right. um, go south and it couldn't be greater than $91, but I think it would be highly unlikely that it would get to that rate. So I guess my point is if you have a number that you would rather use than $91, you can plug that in. But um, the bottom line is that we feel confident in the $91 figure that it wouldn't be exceeded. And uh, when you crunch the numbers, if you did everybody the same way, then CWPMs is the cheapest of the, the two. They're a little cheaper than Murphy Road and much more cheaper than the other competitors who submitted proposals. So Mr. Barron, I'm just looking because there's there is a lot of information on here. I want to make sure. So the CWPM, there's the original proposal and then there's the fixed recycling proposal. Which one you're recommending? The fixed. The fixed. The fixed, which was the fixed is only fixed for the first year, $75. After that, we're recommending that you go with CWPM, but we're projecting or using a $91 figure as sort of a that's on the high side. Mm -hmm. And we don't think it's going to get that high, but if you use the $91 figure, CWPM is still the cheapest. So, um, so the figure you have, you have for fixed recyclables, you, you moved it out to the four years? Yes. Yeah, so, and that's what it's for. 4,700,000 4, is. Yeah, there should be two pages to that. So what we oh, also created a spreadsheet for you, it might be a little bit easier for you to navigate. So if James could go to year four, so this is this is breaking down broken down by year one and year two. Um, so it gives you the totals per year. And then if you go to year four, it gives you the, the totals for all four options. It might be a little bit easier to see on the spreadsheet versus versus in writing on in, in the memo. So depending on which which option we decided to go to, that's what the four-year cost would be based on, on the numbers that Jeff and I are projecting. So between, if I'm reading it correctly, the fixed CWPM is the 4,718,544. And then Murphy Road would be 4733100. Okay. What's the difference between Murphy Road option one and two? I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, option, option one has the fixed rate for four years. So we should compare option two or option one compared to. Well, well you could take is, yeah, actually you they were both proposed. Yeah. So you can compare both of them. Um, they're separate proposals. Option one we felt was much less expensive than option two. Option two was a very expensive proposal. And um, again, the rates are in the uh, are in the memo. And um, for option two, it included, uh, it was $105 a ton for the tipping fee, $110 for the final three years. And um, for the recyclable fee, it was $87.50 a ton, $91 a ton, $110 a ton, and then $110 a ton. So may I ask a question there? Yes, um, Councilor Page, go right ahead. So um, the number 2497 tons, that you project out for recycling. Well, how go ahead? How was that established? Those are, these are averages. So the tonnages that you see there are three year averages. So the, the 10,518 is the average uh, uh, solid waste tons or the trash that we throw away gotcha. per year. And the 2497 is the average recyclable tons that we produce each year. Right. So those are three year averages. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Based on obvious previous yeah, data. So my question is this theoretically, if we were to have, um, um, a tremendous campaign to encourage increased recycling and that number of 2497 increased by 5%, 10% or more. And we're paying zero per ton with Murphy Road. But we were shifting our solid waste over to recycling. 
theoretically, wouldn't the Murphy Road proposal <laughs> end up being less than the others, or regardless of where we went, would it still be would it be less with either of those vendors? Well, the, the thing that we don't know is what the, the cabbage commodity revenue is going to be. Because if if recycling, if China stops with the green fence and recycling commodities go through the roof, we could we can be seeing revenue. Um, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but the potential is there to, to be uh, the town to receive receiving revenue like we did many many years. Ago. I should say many years, ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we were receiving twenty dollars a ton. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, they used so, to pay us the, for our garbage. Yeah, yeah I got you. Yeah, there's some risk reward to that. Um, and I know us as municipal members, we, we like to fix numbers. We, we like them for budgeting, um, but we thought we'd give you the, all the options and, and see how, what you feel comfortable with. As no, far I appreciate as that. Cause I was just wondering if I look at these, if I'm understanding correctly, if recyclables are zero a ton yeah. with Murphy road, and if theoretically we were able to leverage increased recycling, then theoretically, aren't we going to save more money with Murphy road? We would save money or, with. With either option. With either. I'm not sure which one we would save more with, but yes, as if as our recycling goes up, our um, tipping, our um, our solid waste goes down, and the solid waste is always more expensive than recycling. So we, we would save money in either, but I, I couldn't tell you. We don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Come on. But, but as, if, yes, <laughs> I wish I did. Just, so you could have told us that we would have been in war with Ukraine uh, two know, years yeah. ago, then uh, we well, would have been. Five numbers with a red well. ball, as we're on now. So today I was notified um, through my connections that um, the town of Weathersfield last night kind of did a flip flop. So um, the memo that was brought forward to us at our packet before that happened was that CWPM was kind of the agreed upon with all three towns. But now Weathersfield's council took action to support, I believe it was Murphy Road. The and, four right, the four year fixed option. Um, so I did just so everybody in the council understands and I reached out to uh, Minority Leader Page and Majority Leader Mankey today just to kind of give you guys the heads up. Um, that that had happened because I thought that was pretty interesting information. And I did reach out to the mayor of both Weathersfield and Rocky Hill to kind of pick their brains on what were their concerns with it and why did they choose to go a different direction. And certainly the fixed piece versus the variable piece was probably the most prevalent. Um, but other questions that were raised were, um, I guess, looking to the future, um, the size and the scope of CWPM versus the Murphy Road operation. I understand they have many transfer stations and many options. And it seems like many of the big towns, so Hartford, Ellington, Manchester, many of the bigger towns have switched from Mira over to Murphy Road. So it seems like there's a little bit of a trend there, which makes me just wonder why. And does it have to do with facility long term? You know, what are the what are the pros and cons? Not just price wise, but bigger picture. Um, Murphy Road, um, well, they're both pretty new in the game as far as MSW, because for years it was CRRA and Mira. They're pretty much right. the only, only uh, player in the game aside from Covanta. Um, so when Towns left uh, Mira, when the CR, when CRRA, the, all the, uh, the bonds came to, to term, Towns had the option to leave. Mm -hmm. And that's when Murphy Road got into the game and, and uh, started creating their own uh, facilities for MSW. So to say they have more facilities, so they have more uh, opportunity for waste, yes, I believe they do versus CWPM because they are much newer to the game okay. um, as far as uh, MSW, municipal MSW. So um, if you're concerned about something long-term happening, I mean, if we're asking for a four-year four uh, yeah. four commitment, um, but if you're looking for more stability, I think you, you if you wanted to, I think you would put that with Murphy Road just because they've been in the game a little bit longer, okay. if, if I were to say that. So CWPM did mention to us that they are working with Middletown, Berlin, New Britain, and New London. Okay. And those are not huge communities, but they are decent sized communities. Most of them, um, Berlin is not that large, but certainly Middletown is bigger than we are. New Britain is bigger than we are. New London is bigger than we are. So, um, okay. you know, I, they're not new to the, to the game and mm -hmm. in effect, they're not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, so. I'm, sure, I'm assuming you, you did this, but um, I mean, these numbers are like swimming in my head, but um, did you visit the facilities and did you speak to any of the, um, of the customers or the clients of each of the, of no, no, we did not, but the places where they're recommending that we take our um, trash recyclables, um, CWPMs is in Berlin. It's very close to the Trash Away headquarters, 
as a matter of fact, I think it's two doors down. Uh, might be might be three or four, but um, it's very very close. And Murphy Road also, um, you're taking your trash to one place, but you're taking your recyclables to um, to Berlin as well. But did you talk to any of the other towns? To just we've used both of those facilities for oh, yeah. bulky waste. Oh, okay. Um, Trash Away currently takes the bulky waste to Murphy Road. And when we when we ran the program, we administered the program in town, we used Murphy Road for all of our bulky waste collections. So we we have uh, we've done business with both of those those companies and we've never had issues with either of them. Okay. So and uh, the same, the third place uh, outfit was an someone called Country Transfer, and they bought out the Covanta uh, location where we used to take our trash down in Wallingford. So no, uh, we didn't visit those locations, but in general, Newington is familiar with them. I will just say like, I was kind of like, okay, like I always, you guys are the experts. Like, and I do believe me, I do trust the work that you do. But the fact that Weathersfield switched last night just got me thinking maybe a little more in detail about the proposals and trying to look at big picture at what other municipalities are looking at for those concerns. And it, <clears throat> it did make me um, start to think in general, and I know these proposals came in kind of before current events, so to speak, um, but when we're looking at the cost of, you know, the fuel costs increasing, any service increasing, all of those increases that are being passed down to consumers and municipalities, I'm a little concerned about the variable piece um, versus the fixed and being able to kind of budget out for four years, know where we're at, exactly what we have. I know it's a, it's kind of a risk either way, right? So it's a risk if we go with one that it could be higher, but it could also, as you said, give us dividends if it went in that direction. So it could go either way. And I, and I understand that, but from a planning perspective, I'm, I'm a little worried about the variable piece. Um, so I'm just throwing it out there, but, you know, Councilor Donahue. I mean, I'm just looking at the numbers. I'm no math whiz by any means. Right, so we're talking about roughly a difference of sixty-eight thousand dollars over four years between two of the proposals. Yeah, you're going to realize most of your savings is CWPM up front um, because it's a fixed rate, and then as it it, it goes to the next three years, it's, it, it'll be the ACR. Right, so, you know, so it, I mean, between the proposals, you know, if you look at it, you're talking about twenty-two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So if you're more comfortable with a fixed, you know, in the grand scheme of things. You know, I mean, I'd, I'm not saying twenty two thousand dollars isn't a lot of money, right? But you know, the if that's the direction, and it, people may have done the same thing at the council table that I just did. Yes, in my conversations with the other mayors, I know um, Mayor Morata, they're still considering it. They haven't <coughs> brought it to the table yet um, in Rocky Hill, but Weathersfield, that was a big consideration for them, according to Mayor Rell, was that um, that fixed versus variable and not kind of knowing what the future will hold and with the way the economy is now and with the most recent events, which we couldn't have predicted when we were starting this process. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the considerations they had for sure. And then, as I mentioned, the size of the facility, the ability, if something were to happen, if there were contamination, if there was a fire at the facility, um, which does sometimes happen, right? We, <laughs> uh, we've had that happen before. Um, so, um, you know, kind of looking at what's the backup plan and how big each are and, and their ability to handle those kind of situations. And I don't doubt that CWPM has a backup plan, just, you know, um, kind of considering the um, that bigger picture, it's we. I mean, we are conservative, and we're looking at the figure. But if the figure is a little bit different, but the security of it feels better in the it's long run for the policy. town, yeah, it's like an then we have to consider that as well. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be just the dollars, but um, but I'm struggling because I know you guys are bringing forward a recommendation that you believe in, and I know that I consider you the experts, but yet I still have some of these questions in my brain. So I personally don't know if I'm ready to take action tonight. This is a lot of information for us to digest. Well, here's What's the, the timeline? This, that's the thing. We have to opt out of our MIRA um, right. contract um, before the end of the month. Right, okay. So. Um, it has to be received by Mira, I believe, by the 28th or the 30th. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Mr. So Chapman, I asked him that today just to make sure, and he had said end of the month. But our next council meeting, I believe, is March 22nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, the, the 19th is a it special is a, meeting, but we could add it if you needed to. So we yeah. could add it on the 19th if we needed to, if you needed it earlier, or we could do it on the um, on the 22nd at the regular meeting if we didn't do action well, tonight. I guess... The, the, the question for that is, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure about the protocols, but yeah. if, if you're comfortable with leaving there, mm -hmm. I mean, 
I think all these these are, are much better than Mira's proposal because mm -hmm. at least we have something for four years where Mira is, is year to year. Right. Um, and we don't know what Mira is going to be year to year. Um, it's trending in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what the action would be and how we go about doing that, but if you feel comfortable with doing it at the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, in our packet tonight, we only had the consideration of um, the CWPM. I don't see a motion in there for the Mira piece. No, but you could adjust it as you need it to. Okay. Um, I mean, if you needed us to take action on the mirror piece, we could, but it's, I, I'm, I'm hesitant well, we to do that until we know for sure we're going with the other. No, if, if you accept <coughs> CWPM or the Murphy Road proposal, then you have decided to leave mirror. Right. Oh, right. I, I, th right. I, and I think we're all agreeing that we should leave mirror. I, I, I think mm -hmm. yes. that I don't want to have our trash up in the air for a year, year at a time. I think we should decide. Yeah. I like that you're having a, a, a four-year contract with whichever company we go with. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm more. Conserved, I'd rather have the fixed rate so that I know what my costs are going to be the whole four years. But so selfishly, I agree with you. It makes it a lot easier for me to budget for <laughs> yeah, four yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the budget makes the budget easier. But yeah, but we you know we looked at the bottom line and we didn't know um, that makes sense. what would be you know that's what fiscally talking about right. bottom line. That yeah, fiscally we, we were trying to be responsible in making that recommendation. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. that I spent a lot of hours on this, so I'm really trying to take it into consideration. Yeah. I don't want you to think this is a, a easy decision to kind of. So when you look at the numbers, if you look at the four year total for the CWPM original. Again, we think that might be a little optimistic that mm -hmm. you can have a hard time making that number. <laughs> so I, our feeling was that the fixed recyclable rate was the better, the more the more realistic of the two. Mm -hmm. for and it may even be on the high side if you choose to budget that way. That you probably sense. won't end up spending that much. Okay. Okay. But if you go with the Murphy Road option one, you will spend that much because those are fixed that fits rates. for sure. Right? Yep. It's predictable. Yeah. So the 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 CWPM four year is the four seven one eight number. Yes, yes, that's with the if it's fixed for the first year and then three years of the ACR after that. That's right, certain. and then then the next uh, and Murphy Road was four seven seven three. Four seven three three. Right. Four seven three three one hundred. That's correct. Yeah. So those are the two we should compare. Yeah. And, and those you're looking at the uh, fifteen thousand dollar difference between the two. Yeah. Over and yeah. Over four years. Four years. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty minimal difference over four years. And just I know you probably <clears> this, <throat> but but this, the uh, the CWPM fixed recyclables. You you've even though they only guarantee us one year. You've extrapolated out the other three years, right? Correct. At, at the higher rate of ninety-one. At, right, at a rate that we do not expect you will have to pay, but but you, that's, well, that's, I would feel comfortable. That's the worst case scenario. You yeah. recommend, yes. And just add one other question: When you say that that our contamination rate is 10, 10 to fifteen percent, what's a contamination rate for recyclables? That, that is the, the, the waste that ends up in the blue recycling bin. So I put the wrong thing in the recycling bin, and you have to sort it out. So that's that's good. Oh, yes, that's they sort it at, at the facility. Yes. Okay. Yep. Stop doing that. Um, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> once once in a great while, you will get a twenty percent or greater uh, amount, but usually uh, Rocky Hill has had one in the last few years, and it was on a so-called hot load of recyclable material and somebody threw in medical products. Oh, yikes. That would do it. And that's why it was, uh, that would do it. Big well, like Mitch, um, Councilor Page was alluding to, um, we got to get on the ball and have some kind of education. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And we can, we, we've got a couple of commissions that can take the lead on that. That's Kim's had her hand up too. No, go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, I want Kim well, to no, that, what, one question I had was what on average is um, the percent that are you know are we high or we average? We're traditionally it, between that ten and fifteen percent. That, that's yes. that's yep. normal. Well, that's normal. Yeah. Is, that's that, normal. is that good for a town or is that bad? But what's what are the towns? It's, it's on par with most towns. We want to see it lower. Yeah, so, well, obviously, but yeah. Um, but it is on par with surrounding towns. Okay. Yes, and and one of the issues and single stream in theory is a fantastic program. Um, but when not followed properly, it creates a lot of issues. Yeah. And, and you know, when we used to throw cardboard and bottles and, and plastic, it was it was it was so much easier. Right. Um, right. And the commodity and they were cleaner, so the commodities were, were much better. And one of the things that all firms were asked was, did they have an outreach program? And uh, both CWPM and Murphy Road said they could assist with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. In terms of education. Correct. Great. Great. Right. Uh, <coughs> I have another yeah, question. Yeah. Right ahead. Um, 
and I think Jeff, you may have um, raised this, that we actually, there are actually two things that we need to think about or in terms of, of voting. And I wanna get back to the, the, the question and maybe it is a question for, for James. Um, do we feel comfortable voting on leave or stay with Mira tonight and then table the determination on which of the two will receive the award for let's say the, the 19th? I mean, that's up to you guys. I tend to err on the side of caution and say don't both the same night just to make sure we're on mm -hmm. yeah, set I with it. But... recommend that you do both in the same reckoning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would be my recommendation. And this way here, because if you decide that you want to stay with Mira, then you don't need to make an award. Right. And that may be how you end up choosing to go. It's unlikely, but um, right. that's always a possibility. Okay. But we, but we have time to do that. Yeah, we have time. Yeah. yeah. The 22nd is our next regular meeting. Right. We could put it on the 19th if we needed to. We could do either or, but um, that would be within the time frame that's needed for Mira, as long as you guys yeah, have we the ability to let it be drafted. Okay. It's just, it's right. be what what you could not do is consider it as new business on the 19th or the 22nd. Right. Well, tonight would be new business. On, yep. On the second meeting yeah, well, in, in right. April. Yeah. It's, a new it's on as old business it's tonight, old, but so could, yeah. I don't know. It's the first time we're seeing the figures. So it, it doesn't, it's not easy for me at least to digest and vote um, on something of this magnitude in one session. So I would recommend to the council that we um, hold off on the vote on this and do it at our next regular meeting on the 22nd. If anything comes up in the meantime and you need us to do it earlier, if anything comes to light, just let us know. We can always add it to a special meeting agenda or create a special meeting for that purpose. I know that you are in budgets, and I would just like to say that this proposal is within your budgetary Good. guidelines. Okay. Oh, yes. Excellent. And Excellent. we also, I probably by the by this twenty second, um, Rocky will have made their determination. I can see what 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 they've decided. I didn't realize this garbage was so so uh, convoluted and yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> I just thought they put it in the truck and they take it away and things are fine. Oh, but it was easy; anybody could do it. Exactly. <laughs> I would just. I, I just wanted to acknowledge um, that I do see Jason Manafort from CWPM on the call. Um, I'm hesitant to. Um, I'm, I'm hesitant if we don't have Murphy Road here. If we're considering both, mm -hmm. that we should give kind of equal billing to both if we are considering both. Yes. So that would be my only hesitation. But um, yes. if you feel there's anything we need to address with him, we can. But. Then we should offer the same uh, opportunity to. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was looking okay. to speak to you about. Perhaps he's so. just uh, on to hear what we're. See debating. our smiling faces. Yeah. Maybe yeah. That you can do a better job of explaining recyclables than uh, any of the. I didn't know I. if you had invited him or what the. Okay. Mr. All right. Chapman did. Mr. Chapman did. Okay. Okay. Um, so I would say that if we want to get information directly from vendors, we should consider having both on next time if we're, if we're still considering both, if we think that that's the direction we're going in. I agree. In. Okay. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. Yep. Okay. And I want to thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you for yeah, thank Please, you very as much. the mayor said, uh, understand our discussion tonight is not a reflection at all of our gratitude for your hard work. Correct. And your intelligence on this topic. We just need to look at all the cra crazy Blame environment going on. So. Yeah. Exactly. Blame Weathersfield. They red flagged it for us. No, <laughs> it's first. good. It's good to have this kind of dialogue, though. I think I really do. I think it's a good conversation to have. But um, yeah, we appreciate your work on this. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right, counselors, that's lots of number crunching. That's your homework. Right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, sharpen the pencils. That's it. The difference, the difference between the two is 13. 13 yeah. yeah, it's a small number. Yeah. 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 So it's good that you did that and made it put in perspective. Yeah. I can read All right, folks. Yeah, yeah, so. so we are going to go ahead. Uh, the next item on our agenda this evening is, let's see, we're moving into resignations and appointments. We have a resignation for the Vehicle Appeals Board. Okay, now, can we write to? Yes, you should please. Do you want to go first okay. and I'll, I'll do the next one. Sure. Okay. Um, resolve that the Newington Town Council hereby accepts the resignation of Kevin Borb as a member of the Vehicle Appeals Board in accordance with email correspondence dated February 22, 2022 and effective immediately. Second. All right, motion made by Councillor, Man uh, Councillor Page, seconded by Councillor Mankey. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Because they have a lot. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Counselors, if there's anyone with stuff on in the background, if you could mute that before you unmute, we would appreciate it. Uh, it is coming through on the audio. 
Um, all right, so we now are on to resignation of the Central Connecticut Health District. I believe Ms. Rowdy, you're gonna do that one? Councilor Rowdy? Resolved that the Newington Town Council hereby accepts the resignation of Kevin Barb as a member of the Central Connecticut Health District in accordance with email correspondence dated February 22nd, 2022 and effective immediately. Second. All right, uh, motion made by Councilor Rada, seconded by Councilor Mankey. Any discussion? I will just say I appreciate um, Mr. Borup so quickly um, <laughs> taking care of these for us because I know he's an appointment to Charter Revision Commission. And in order to serve on that commission, he cannot be on any other boards or commissions as part of um, the language. So uh, we appreciate him doing that in such a timely manner. All right, there's no other discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is refunds, uh, approval of the March 8th, 2022 refunds for an overpayment of taxes. Deputy Mayor Bedraco. Resolved that property tax refunds in the amount of $2,267.68 are hereby approved in the individual amounts. And for those named on the request for a refund of an overpayment of taxes, certified by the revenue collector, a list of which is attached to this resolution. Second. Second. Second of my Councilor Nagel, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> we tabled item nine, the minutes, so we will move on now to new business. Uh, the first uh, item is the uh, discussion of the Permanent Municipal Building Commission creation. Um, I will just start by saying that this is an item that the council has met on a few times in the past, um, but it was prior to the new council uh, taking office. So we are looking to just discuss this this evening to make sure that the new, newer councilors, new, newly elected councilors um, are able to have a um, discussion with us on the topic and get acclimated to uh, the uh, proposed um, language so that we can have a good discussion. And then we would be looking to possibly take action at our next meeting on this one. Um, so before us, we had the draft language, uh, the, just for the public's understanding, the, the premise behind the council considering the formation of a permanent municipal building commission is that currently for every project that comes forward, a public building committee has to be formed. And um, oftentimes, um, first of all, it's very difficult to get people to serve on these types of commissions. So when we have more than one going at a time, it can be challenging to um, have enough people. But one of the other things we've noticed over time is that these commissions are typically, um, they are built um, based on volunteerism, which is wonderful and we're so appreciative of that. But oftentimes we don't have a solid foundation for people in the trades or in related fields to the building um, process. And um, we're looking to uh, perhaps change that. And we're looking to have members of the committee that are from related building professions to be able to offer a more pro professional perspective on the topics at hand. Um, additionally, in the past, there have been more, um, I would call them political appointments. The appointments are made from each of the um, town committees. So Democratic and Republican town committees bring forward candidates. Um, and there's always been a concern um, as to making sure that the focus of the project is on the project and not any other extraneous, um, quite frankly, political agendas or, you know, certain departments have, you know, certain interests or, you know, the town hall um, project was a wonderful committee, but, um, you know, there wasn't a ton of professional um, experience on the committee. Um, you know, there were some, I don't, I don't mean to say that, but so this is something that we're looking to make sure that um, a permanent building committee would be able to prioritize projects that come forward. So the council would decide if it's a project that is viable to move forward to the commission, but then the commission would be able to um, determine in terms of funding and how that works. They would have um, the oversight of that and then bring back um, to the council the final um, proposals. Um, there is the exception that Ms. Mankey brought up to us and we have worked um, uh, tirelessly with the library committee because we wanted to make sure that they had a voice um, knowing that they are the property owners. It's a little bit different than other town departments. And so um, you'll see that um, I think James already, did you already amend it? I haven't changed it yet. I don't All have right. the document with me, just okay. the PDF. So we do have, I do have the language that Ms. Mankey and it was right into the record. So we will reflect that in the draft for the next meeting. Um, it will be added. Um, the library's concern was that the language um, around membership 
Um, in an effort to make it apolitical, um, we had, uh, as a council, discussed having the um, criteria be that no member appointed to the commission um, by either party would serve on any other elected or appointed board or commission or position within the town. Um, the exception to that would be the library board because the library board of trustees um, does, you know, they are the property owners and they should have a voice at the table. And so that would be the only exception to that. So in other words, if we're doing a, for uh, some of our projects, like if it's a board of ed project or if it's a parks and rec project, um, you know, we wouldn't want um, over representation by a certain um, department on a commission that would affect the project. We want it to be um, as, um, objective as possible and not subjective. So um, so that is the thought process behind that language. Um, let's see, if you wanna scroll down just a little bit, James. <clears throat> so the ex officio membership, the mayor is always ex officio on all town committees. That means that I can participate in the um, discussions but I would not have a vote in any way, shape or form. The town manager as well, same thing, um, or his designee. So in the event that it is another, you know, often like um, Mr. Barron was here earlier for um, things that affect highway and parks. So there may be certain projects. He also represented the town hall project. So if Mr. Chapman saw fit to have a staff member represent at, um, at the commission, then they would act as ex officio in his place as well. Um, the chairperson of the Board of Education, superintendent of schools, or their designee would serve as ex officios if the project was related to a Board of Education project. Um, trying to think the other specifics. That's kind of the meat and potatoes of the, um, of the membership. Fire department would have people. Yep, fire, fire commission would also have um, ex an ex officio member if it was related to firehouse. Um, really any department, whatever department or agency that brings forward the project would have that ex officio membership to be able to share information related to um, the needs of that agency and the project with the commission. The commission we are looking to, and this is a little bit of a revision to um, make it a five person commission. Oh, hold on, I'm just trying to find that language. Lots of pages. It's under composition. Right. There, one. Yeah, here it is. So uh, the commission would consist of five voting members, three of which would be qualified because of their experience in the fields of architecture, landscape architecture, building construction, contract review, or building trades. Two of which one shall be appointed by each major party. Um, so there will be three of those members and then two more, one from the Democrat and one from the Republican town committees would be brought forward as well. So it would change the makeup of the commission to um, have three professional members, two that are brought forward. We would be asking the town committees to bring forward people with similar qualifications as the three professional members also. Yes. I would just point out that in the, in the, the circumstances of a library project, there'd be two additional voting members. So it'd bring that total to Correct. seven. Correct, thank you. Five, yes. six, seven, yes, seven. And that would make sense. <clears throat> we don't ever wanna have an even number for a vote. <clears throat> so that would be, um, that would certainly make sense. And that is in line with, right now there is a building committee that had been formed years ago for the library um, to consider a, a renovation and addition project. So um, in looking at the composition of that commission, the library wanted to have similar representation um, percentage wise, number wise on this committee that they have on that. So that was another consideration that the council took into account when creating this draft language um, with the input of the library. I would just point out this is probably the, the third iteration of this um, this proposal or this this um, ordinance. Uh, the first one came out. We made some changes and tweaks to it. We changed some language. Uh, we came out another one and we made some more ch changes based on on comments from the public. And uh, um, this document was probably finished up. And this one, particularly this one, is in January, I believe. Right when, mm -hmm. once we met with the library people and where's your last discussions you had those folks yep. so this is the first public discussion of, of those changes yes yeah i mean yes. not, not of the process no, no, but of this but of this, of this yeah, yeah prior to the election we had a number of iterations and then um we had kind of discussions with the library to um figure out the terms that would be acceptable to them um right. that would work for the library board and trustees um to bring forward to the council for consideration okay. yeah 
So what do you, Mayor, what do you want to do right now? Is this for us to start to go through this and mm -hmm. discuss? Absolutely. So we can discuss language. We can talk about changes or recommendations tonight, but there will be an opportunity for that at the next meeting where we could consider taking action. It's not that we have to. So we certainly have the opportunity. I would request, and I know <coughs> many of, most of you have been working on this for a long time mm -hmm. and you're maybe tired of working on this, <laughs> but I would request because this is a big deal. Yes. That I would request in terms of process that we be given a chance to digest this. Then if we could please on the 22nd present our thoughts and we can debate, mm -hmm. discuss, hopefully agree yeah. on a lot of stuff. And then the following meeting, take a vote. Would okay. that be acceptable to the... Yeah, that's fine with me. I don't think there's any, right now we have the Anna Reynolds building project moving forward. So I don't see any projects bonding wise coming forward immediately, so to speak. So I don't think there's any time constraint on this process. So right. I, we absolutely could that's do that. All right. And yeah, Anna Reynolds um, is excluded from this. Right, so that's the other thing. So in terms of building uh, committees that are already formed, um, there is the Anna Reynolds building project, which has already gone out to referendum. So we would not be looking to touch that. That will stay as is. Other building committees that have not gone out to referendum yet, we would look to funnel into this um, project building committee so that they're all handled in that way. So like there's a Mill Pond um, committee formed that has been um, not really meeting lately and, and we would be looking to disband that commission and our committee and have it go through this process. Um, the library would then go through this process as well. Um, and any other projects that were brought forward would come to the council first. It's the language in here delineates that it would be brought to um, town staff to be brought to us first to kind of vet and see where it goes and determine if there's a budget that we need to be looking at bonding wise. I mean, those are all things that we would have to consider um, before sending it to this commission. So the only two that excluded just for clarification are the town hall building committee, which is still in effect because we haven't got the final report yet. Right. So that should be cleaned up mm -hmm. fairly soon. Yep. And then mm -hmm. the Anna Reynolds, which those two have also gone to referendum and they're right. they're already out there and they're they're progressing. So we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, change those. Everything anything going forward then would be under this new proposal. Are there concerns about the existing committees that are working on projects? Concerns about their process or no, I don't think there's any concern specific to any of the committees. It's just that we're trying to streamline the process and make sure we have that professional piece. Right. Um, and a, and a, as objective a view on the projects as possible. And then I guess another question, again, I don't know if we want to get deep into this because I'm just first blush on this. Um, one question would be the, because I understand we want to minimize and reduce as much of the politics around this as possible and make it efficient for our taxpayers mm -hmm. and effective for the final product. But if we're trying to do that, while I appreciate the politics and everything, um, to have two members appointed, one by each party, seems to me to be contrary to the spirit and maybe the uh, content of, the, uh, of what we're actually trying to do here. So while I'm always up for a good political fight, <laughs> I'm also up for doing this as true to the spirit and the letter of which it's intended. So I just wanna raise that as something to, for further discussion. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just, I think one of the things we did, just, I don't think, one of the things we discussed is that contrary to other committees, when we put people on boards and commissions, on this case, we'd want to see their the people's resumes. We want to see so we want to see If right. somebody said, I want to be a, a point, you know, Tim Mankey to think, so what has he built besides the birdhouse in the backyard? <laughs> what, what is, what's been built? What, what, what is, what's his credentials? And we, and we wouldn't just want just anybody off the street. We want people who have skills in, in electrical or plumbing okay. or, um, landscaping architecture because it involves reading plans and if i, I have no clue how to read plans i shouldn't really I, agree. So I just wanted to raise that and then the only other initial first blush and i'll defer to anybody else is is and i get it it's hard to find anybody to do anything nowadays to volunteer so i get the reality mm -hmm. but the length of term if we have a a, a long project you know I, I would want to look at is it possible and realistic to have people serve for as long as we can you know lock them in a room so that so they see a project from start <laughs> to finish uh, rather than cycle through because that creates other problems. But again, y'all have probably discussed that right? and there's probably very good reasons for why. <laughs> well, you hit on one of them. So getting someone to commit to a, a term is a lot easier than a longer piece. Um, and that being said, if someone is on it, it would also, they could just be reappointed again. So it's not that they would have to leave at the end of that right. term. We could certainly reappoint them if they still wanted to be a member on the commission and they were, you know, in favorable standing, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
with the commission. So um, that's certainly something that is very common practice on and our committee. Probably best practices we've looked at other towns to see how mm -hmm. other towns have similar yeah. Yeah. similar proposals that. that uh, um, I mean, some, some just go to this, they try to build a building committee for each, each project, but some have similar. Okay. I just didn't mean to have my back to that. And that's all I had for, for that's all I had for now, just to sort of, you know, first blush. Yes. Yeah, we just, we just looked at it and say, you know, if we, if we put a five-year term out there, it might turn Scare people off. Away. Yeah. Right. So, you know, three years, and then once we got them, then we're not looking. Right. So, <laughs> Welcome in. And free water. How free water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't get the free water. We like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> just for us. Just I, one question I had on, on, on the composition. I wonder if we should put, we have uh, architectural, architecture, landscape, architecture, building construction, contract review, and building trades. We might want to ex expand that to someone who had financial experience in, 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 um, um, in budgeting a project. Materials cost? Or somebody who, so maybe somebody from a bank who, who built a project or, or built, workflow. Or, yeah, or how much it cost and where the money is and how the process process. So, or maybe somebody from an insurance perspective saying, you know, this is a great building, but you have an insurance problem. The, 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 the exit here at the gym is an is insurance liability waiting to happen. So my, who, who my only caveat that? to that, and I, I, don't, I don't disagree, we can add that, but we also have finance experts on staff sure. that we can also tap into, maybe not for construction, but <laughs> would be able to get us some information. Um, and we also have insurance um, folks that we sure. can contact if okay. we needed it. But I don't disagree with you that that niche for construction is a little bit different. So, uh, you know, we could certainly consider adding language that would not exclude those folks because yeah. it is exclusionary right now. So Effect management. Project management. There you go. Project yep. management. Yeah, that could be. That could be under building. It could be under building yeah. construction. I guess oh, yeah. you could. Yeah. You could make a. And and the people that were were appointed appointed from each political party would have to have these same sort of same qualifications. I would hope so. Yeah. Well, having having sat as, as a during the candidacy period, sitting, I've sat through some some of the um, town council meetings, and mm -hmm. I know that. There was quite a bit of discussion about this when it first came, and I and I remembered coming back with a draft and then coming back with another draft. And I appreciate the fact that we're now in this iteration. And what I remember hearing and the concerns and the discussion are being taken into consideration with with this particular draft. Um, th two things. Um, one. Um, without expanding the committee beyond five voting members, which maybe we will decide to do, we, if it's not already in here, perhaps as we're going through and we're reviewing and, may, and maybe revising, that we put in language that we can also draw on the expertise of some of the folks in, local, in town government or in town, and again, as ex officio members that would come in at a particular point in time because of the specific expertise that, that they have beyond these five members. That said, my feeling is I agree with Mitch that we have an opportunity to read through this, to digest it, to to edit, <laughs> <laughs> to, re, to review and, and, and make any revisions we want to ask, uh, you know, have questions mm -hmm. that then we can come forward, I think, with a more informed discussion. Yeah, absolutely. That's not a problem. There's no timeline that we have to adhere to. So um, I, I think that's very fair. Yeah. And that was our purpose for putting in this new business and not, right. you know, trying to move it forward in any way. So Thank you. Um, absolutely. You will notice under section five here, that one actually does appoint department members specifically for the project for an input. So we do have that in there yeah. already. So just so you know, it's there. They know that's been done. Yeah. Yes, it's been like a given. And just historically, just so you understand, we did discuss, We I think the first iteration was five members. We then had moved it up to seven. Biggest concerns, two concerns with seven, is that um, in order to achieve the percentage of representation that the library would need, mm -hmm. you'd be looking at adding three more to that, which would be an even number of 10. So that's a little bit of an issue. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, filling a seven person commission with professionals is would be very difficult, um, extremely difficult. Like we have the Standing Insurance Commission Committee that um, we 
oftentimes have difficulty finding folks with the expertise that yeah. we need. You know, there's certain committees that are formed with that professional niche in them, and it's extremely hard with just a couple of members. So there's a huge concern if we make it seven, um, filling those spots with professionals would be difficult. And a quorum, silly question, but a yeah. quorum of five members is what, three, minimum three? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so I think we're, we're good with this discussion for this evening and we will look to um, continue the discussion at our next meeting. Great dialogue tonight, I love it. So next we have the additional appropriation for Camp Avenue milling and paving. And I see uh, Janet Murphy, our finance director is here. Do you want to take this one? Sure. You have a, you. A, a, a name, do you, you have, have a name a, tag? A wow. Tag. A name tag and, your, <laughs> and you got a water. You got water and your own your own microphone. Yeah. Man, it's funny. I don't even have a, you also a, have a the name uh, tag in my office. office this, is, this is something. Take that with you when you. I guess you <laughs> a souvenir. And we do have Gary Furstenberg, our town engineer, online with us as well, so he can address any questions or concerns as well. So um, it came to my attention from actually Gary and from the town manager and from Rob Hillman, the, the highway, that Camp Avenue was on the list last year to be done. It got delayed. Um, they can't fit it in this year without bumping off some other roads. So they came to me and said, how can we find some financing to be able to include Camp Avenue this year? Well, it so happens that the state was nice enough to help us out with that. Um, as you said in your, uh, saw in your memo, we received almost $1.8 million in municipal grants and aid from the state this year. That was 419,000 more than we budgeted. Um, they upped the amount. Now, municipal grants and aid has to be used on road maintenance, uh, road improvements, all has to be used on roads. So by doing this and, and putting the additional appropriation out there, we're using it for the purpose they're asking us for. We hadn't budgeted, we hadn't planned on it. So the additional appropriation we take out will be returned at the end of the year when we get this revenue from the state. So it's kind of a win-win. We're able to do Camp Avenue and it's not gonna really cost us anything right. out of our general fund at the end. Nice, great. Gary, are you there? I don't know if he's on. Okay. It's not going to cost us anything. You, you had me at that. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not bumping off any other roads that were on the list to be done, which is right. which is what we needed to accomplish. Just to clarify that we're only milling and paving. Milling we're and paving only. Extending. We're not nope. making sure. When I talked to Rob Hillman about this, he said, um, no, that's only milling and paving. They did talk about ex, um, widening the road, but that would encroach too much on people's property. Right. This is and then you'd have to move utilities and everything like that. And that could be up to a $400,000 project. So I think they said that. as a way of maintaining the flow, we're, would we require parking on one side? One side, that? yeah. Yep. I believe on the north side. To the make sure that emergency vehicles can get through. Right. Yeah. And even then, I think he said it's tight. tight. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is tight. I see Gary Furstenberg, our town engineer, is here. Hi, Gary. Hi, Beth. Yeah, it took me a moment to uh, find my uh, unmute button, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been listening along, and Janet's done a very good job of explaining the... Uh, the history of that uh, particular road. Okay, great. Um, counselors, do you have any questions on this one? No. No, it seems like a win-win. So, mm -hmm. free money is good. Yes, Councilor Nagel. This is this particular street is is very complicated in terms of doing more than what we were doing on the short term, and I know that it needs what you're asking to be done. And as you alluded to, uh, uh, Janet, that uh, uh, there's, there's great disagreement among those who live on that road as to what to do with it and how to do with it. And part of the problem is that there isn't room without someone having to give up uh, part of their private property and so on. And it, it, if you've driven on that road, it, it has a history of why it is the way it is. But it, if you've driven on that road, it's wide, it's narrow, it's wide, it's narrow. And I, I think at least where they deserve to have a road that truly is in disrepair to at least be repaved. Uh, if uh, if not someday, the monies, let alone the the process of figuring out what to do with something that that seems to be way too much uh, uh, too much beyond uh, uh, any of our abilities to to figure out and make everybody happy. And, uh, happy that at least uh, this is just uh, this is a start. And uh, it's great to have money come in from the state to use. Yeah, use it while we got it. That's it. Right. 
Absolutely. All right, if there's no other questions or discussion, we'll go ahead and move this to our next agenda for consideration of action. Okay, all set. Next item this evening is the 2022 JAG Local VCP <coughs> Grant Award. Um, you'll see in your packet the memo um, regarding the Newington Police Department has been awarded a justice assistance grant for the purchase of a Star Chase high speed pursuit alternative technology. This device is a police vehicle mounted GPS launcher system mounted on a police vehicle and deployed when a suspect vehicle flees from a police officer. The GPS tag sticks to the fleeing vehicle and then can be tracked using mapping software. That's fascinating. That is. <laughs> I love that. Um, the Newington Police Department will be the first police department in the state of Connecticut to use such technology. The total purchase of the system will be covered with the grant funds in addition to monies from the forfeiture asset fund. A copy of the grant award has been included for our review and a resolution to accept the grant will be included uh, next agenda packet for the next meeting. Um, this is fascinating to me because you know we've talked for so long now about um, the issues with um, the inability to chase based on state policy. Um, so this would give the police an, an opportunity to have a, a mechanism to track those vehicles if they can get this um, you know, on that vehicle when they are fleeing, I guess, which may be difficult, I don't know. It's, um, it's a slick system. Yeah, it's pretty impressive to, to think that this is something that's being brought forward. And the fact that we'd be the first in the state to be um, putting this into use is, um, I think that's great news. I, I love it when we're on the forefront of using technology to, um, to help us out. So I love this. I especially am grateful that there's a grant to pay for it. Um, and so- um, I would vote yes, as long as I can eat, I can try it. Yeah, yeah I'd <laughs> like to see where it works. We'll call the chief. You can stand in front of the car. I'll shoot you. No, no, that's not, that's not <laughs> the idea. Tom. You're going to be the fleeing vehicle? Right. Well, right. I, do they actually, I guess we should have the police, the chief, they don't actually shoot something at your car, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, they do. It attaches yeah, to the car. It's about the size of a, a small hockey puck, and it's got adhesive on all the sides, and they hit it, hit the back of the car with it. Cool is that? That's pretty wow. cool. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's why I want to try it. Too. So if I had a dog, I could find out where the dog was. <laughs> it's like Kinder. a chaser. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I'm gonna sign up for a ride along. <laughs> like, yeah, we, we want to go. We want to go try it. <laughs> I just want to bring into council's attention that I mean, think about grant wise. This is another grant. Yeah. yeah. Um, how many months go by sometimes where we don't hear about grants at all coming to the table, and the last several months. At almost every meeting, we're, we're talking about a grant that's coming forward. This Another is, grant that... Uh, I'm not sure if Sonic was involved in this or not, but um, the chief may have done this. No, on his own. this was sure. just the chief. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They've applied for this grant previously. Okay. So they handle it on their own. Okay. So Sonic didn't have it. But it's pretty, pretty yeah, amazing, I, I the think, grant money that we're tapping into. I don't know how we could not, we could not approve this. It right. seems a no-brainer. Yep. yep. Agreed. Yep. And I, I, you know, I think um, Mr. Chapman has made it clear that we want to go after grants, you know, based on what the council has said um, in the past, saying that, why aren't we tapping into more of this? And we're, we're trying to make that a priority. Um, and it's very clear that Mr. Chapman and his staff have made it a priority as well. And we're, I'm thankful for that because that helps us certainly at budget time. Um, so, and I just, like I said, I'd love that we're the first ones to be considering this. So. And in all seriousness, is this uh, maybe obvious to you? Is this in large part because of the no chase rule that we can actually just tag a vehicle safely? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's like you only have to get within 20 feet of the car or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Just that, uh, as an aside, do we know where, where the status of the cameras we were having installed at the various locations is that's been? Oh, that's that's ongoing. We put a purchase order in. Okay, uh, and so that's, working. that's yep. in the process. Okay. Yep, that's in the process. Yep, great, beautiful. No, this looks I great. think this all uh, fits in with the whole idea of safety, which we hear on mm -hmm. all are in agreement is one of, if not our priority, uh, given the jaws of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, granted, something terrible has happened. Safety. This yep. is safety. And safety what, uh, yeah. The state is doing on the Berlin Turnpike and Cedar in terms of uh, trying to calm traffic in some ways and and uh, working those uh, lights so that people uh, have uh, less of an opportunity to to speed and make traffic flow efficiently is safety and it all it all fortunately fits together and uh, we're very I'm very pleased to to see this as well as the others coming to mm -hmm. fruition. It's like you're writing our resume. I like it. Yeah. The Cedar Street traffic system is pretty slick. I talk to the guys all the time when they're out there. And yeah. It's pretty it impressive. Is. It's and once again, it's state of the art. Yep. I believe I mentioned last fall about it when I yep. talked to someone from DOT just by chance, uh, and uh, 
uh, you know, another one of the, the first in the state and one of the first in the in the country to uh, use this uh, technology that's now available that's uh, miraculous and uh, can help. And here's another example right mm -hmm. here. Right. I just think that we should, uh, for Councilor Page and, and the mayor, we should put this on our agenda, have someone from the state come and talk to us about the construction that goes on in the turnpike. And, the yeah. and I think I said, that's, that's important because it's happening mm -hmm. and we should have the DOT explain what it is so we could all kind of take comfort in it. Something's happening. Right. And as I, we've talked about in our agenda setting meeting and I've spoken uh, with the chief who, and it was alluded to tonight about the data on the bump or the increase in crashes on Cedar Street and everywhere. But with that terrible tragedy uh, that we talked about tonight, on the mountain and then with the crash recently that was we were alerted to regarding Vincent Drive. Hopefully the, the new lighting system yeah. will help with calming and anything else we can do because I know it's a state road, but it's it's, it's out of control. Just as an aside comment, I drove on the on Cedar Street today about well, it was after breakfast. So I was driving on Cedar Street and they were there was a unmarked police car doing a, a, ra a radar check. I've never seen anybody do a radar check in a long time, but they were doing a radar check and there was one on the top of the mountain on Cedar Street doing a radar Oh, that's check. good. What time was it? Because I go that way to work. <laughs> <laughs> this was probably about 11 o'clock. Oh, okay, I'm already at work, but... Yeah. But there was, I haven't seen anybody doing a radar check in a while. Right. And, and... Well, with COVID, I think a lot of that had stopped. Right, um, because they safety, couldn't, so... they, yeah, for safety, yeah. so... Anyway, we're, um, we're off topic, but... Yeah. I'm trying to find on my computer if I can... Um, but I'm having trouble. I know the chief recently participated in a press conference um, for a new program. Okay. It's the acronym is SAVE. The early uh, intervention. Uh, yeah, where they're trying to get um, some services. They're partnering with the state's attorney's office and New Britain. New Britain. New Britain. Yep. Actually, yeah, that's an yeah. excellent program. It is. And I, and I, I was actually looking to see yeah, if I could well, find I the well, name. I have it here, actually. I was Thank to, you. Um, it's called SAVED, and it's, it's New Britain, Bristol, Newington, and Weathersfield with the state's attorney office out of New Britain. Mm -hmm. And um, it provides treatment and coping tools to children who've been a victim or exposed to some kind of trauma, whether it's violent, sexual, or psychological in nature. And it educates the parents and any adults in these child's lives about the, the, the trauma that these kids could have. And it mm -hmm. goes about... Um, it partners with the schools and it partners with the police and other stakeholders to get these students and get these children the help they need mm -hmm. um, on an ongoing basis. And it also helps the, um, gives guidance to the parents or the guardians on how to help these children. And the thing about this program is, you know, a lot of them are, sh you know, short term immediate results. This is not going to be immediate results. It's going to be a long term. So after the exposure to the incident, five, 10, 15 years down the road, hopefully this child who witnessed something so horrible will have been given the tools to cope with it. And um, this is the first of its kind. It's another first of the mm -hmm. kind. Thank goodness for Newington Police Department the getting involved in this. Yep. Yeah. And um, it's based on programs in um, Alabama and Colorado. And um, again, it's proactive and we talk about juvenile offenders, you know, what are we going to do about juvenile offenders? And, you know, unfortunately, it's not going to get the current juvenile offender, but by having, um, by getting it at the beginning and having these kids targeting um, students, speaking with them, following them through a period of years, it's going to help them before they become a repeat offender mm -hmm. or a juvenile offender. And again, um, I was going to just want to congratulate, you know, Chief Clark and the Newington Police Department for going after this. I mean, the past couple of weeks, we've had instances of our police department um, being a leader, not, yeah. not only regionally, but in the state in pursuing some of these programs. Right. Um, and that's the type, I mean, I'm just, uh, we're, we're, we're so blessed to have mm -hmm. this type of police responders. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, and it may not be relevant quite to this agenda item, but it is because we're talking about how this is safety, you know, and, and the chief is really on the cutting edge, leading edge in our state of making sure that we're involved in these new programs, new technology, making sure we're doing everything we can to make Newington safer. And, and you know, and this, that program looks to the future too. And so, you know, again, I think we're doing great things here. I am thankful for the chief and, and the work that he and his staff have done on uh, getting involved in these programs and securing the grant um, that it's really key for us. So 
we will go ahead and move this to our next agenda for um, consideration of action. All right, next item is discussion of canceling the April 12th, 2022 regular meeting. Um, I did bring this up to agenda because that is school vacation week. And I know in the past, um, this meeting is embedded uh, right smack dab in the middle of a lot of budget meetings. Um, and so um, I wanted to bring it up so that we could consider it. We'll probably know better by our next meeting at the end of March, what our future agendas look like and if canceling is viable or not. So. Um, by introducing it this evening, it allows us to be able to take action at our next meeting should we choose to. Um, and so at agenda setting, we can certainly look at proposed items for the next couple of agendas. But in the past, we have considered canceling during school vacation week just because oftentimes people either are on vacation, some counselors or some members of the public. And so um, that has been a past action that we've done. So I just wanted to bring it up for consideration. The only hesitation, as I said in the agenda, I would have is if it if we felt that it interfered with the public's access to um, express their views about uh, mm -hmm. yay or nay on any budget item. Right. But if it feels, if it seems to us that, and based on past precedent, that it doesn't interfere with that process, then I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, I mean, we have other meetings that are designated budget meetings. Right. We'll have a second um, public hearing where I'll present the council budget. So the public will have an opportunity then. They have an opportunity at every budget meeting. Um, and that would be a regular meeting. So we wouldn't necessarily be, no budget, be discussing yeah. budget. We could, but. So yeah, um, but we'll know more when we meet at the next agenda and then we'll bring forward for the council um, the recommendation of the agenda setting committee based on what we know to be true of the future agendas too. So just inter introducing it tonight would allow us to take action right. in terms of normal procedure at the next meeting. Any thoughts, concerns, considerations? I want to look out for the, I mean, the public may be on vacation, a lot of may be on vacation too. Mm -hmm. okay, so. yeah. Which in the past, we had avoided scheduling budget meetings during that week specific to that, especially if it was related to Board of Ed, because often our families are away during that week. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that was always a consideration in terms of budget too. So we will move that forward to our next agenda for consideration. Moving on, we are now entering into overview of budget and budget procedures. Oh boy. And then department budget review. Uh, Ms. Murphy, I think you're taking the lead on this tonight. Yeah, I am. Um, a little different this year. I'm used to sitting home in my sweatpants and my fuzzy socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, well, okay. You could have worn your fuzzy socks. I, 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 I apologize, but my knee and back are just acting up a little. So right well, ahead. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an overview, because uh, two of you are new this year, um, regarding what happens, I wanted to give you overview, what happens before we give it to you. So. Um, about the end of usually in November, maybe a little before November, we send out requests to all the departments to submit their CIP and their operational budgets to the finance department. Those come in, we usually get the CIP for one first, and then we'll get the operational one. And then we will put together all this and all the totals and everything to review with the town manager. The town manager will then review it. We have meetings with the department heads regarding their budgets, any changes he sees to fee, see fit. This all keeps going on over you know, a two, three month period. Um, and he'll come down to his final recommendations. We'll put the books together that you have right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you flip to the, the next one, now you have the books and here's the budget schedule that I know um, the mayor was just discussing. You receive them on the 4th. We want to make sure you get them a little bit before we actually start talking to you about them so you have a chance to look through them. This meeting tonight is to be your first departmental budget reviews. We'll go through about four sections of the, of the budget tonight with you, department by department. Uh, the 19th will be the second departmental budget review. That's the Saturday meeting that we will have where we'll finish um, um, a lot of the, the information um, big in, on that day, the big thing we'll be going over is CIP. So CIP will be on that Saturday. I know Rose Lyons earlier asked about the books and the information. We are still putting those together. Okay. So once we finalize those, um, I'm sure she, we'll make sure she gets a copy of them. Okay. Um, and then on the 22nd, um, that's the regular meeting. That is the last budget review, the departmental budget review you have. At any of those meetings, the public make comments, make suggestions. After we finish the review, it's kind of now in your hands. Voting on anything. So, so come on April 5th, um, you'll have the second public hearing that the mayor was talking about that um, she will have. And then any special, any changes you want to make to the budget at that time. Sometimes you guys do make changes. Sometimes you don't. 
Um, but that gives you a chance to listen to the proposal, discuss it some more between yourself, once again, get public comments. And then on the final day is April 19th. This is where you adopt the budget and you set the mill rate. There can still be discussions, as we said, that night, changes made that night. There'll be spreadsheets that I give to both um, of the parties um, that have the page one that you see in your book. That's the most popular page in the whole budget book. And there's a, a there'll be a, a the tabs and on the second tab will be where you can keep track of any changes you're suggesting that you put forward in, in these meetings and how it will affect the totals in the mill rate. So the page one that Janet's referring to, because it's a little um, confusing, is the last page before the first blue tab. It's the grid that Keith went over that has the general summary. That one right there, Kim. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you'll get this electronically for you guys to play with during each one of your meetings. So you can, and the second tab, as I said, it'll be set up so that if you want to make any changes, you can make the changes and see how it affects that page one. Um, that is, is basically the schedule that we have. I kind of put in here the third one where we stand right now as I had to just start to talking about appropriations. And this is the slide that shows um, right now all the different expenses and the categories that they're in. The category we're gonna talk about tonight is uh, the first portion of the general government, which is the one he's got up there in blue, um, which is a total appropriation proposing of 38,804,273,000. The other ones coming? Yeah, there are the other ones. And we will of course be discussing all these areas. Um, is that the Board of Ed updated amount after they made changes? That the Board of Ed, that is the town managers. This is the town managers proposed. Okay. okay. So all these numbers of the town managers proposed. It, it was brought to my attention. I know they, and and uh, yeah, I will just explain this way. You don't see the, the Board of Ed. You see it on their one sheet in here, mm -hmm. the one sheet that they give us. They're the Board of Ed proposed. What ends up happening is um, I worked with Keith on his message in the beginning, mm -hmm. and we got that done on February 22nd, although they had already voted they hadn't sent us down the page, so we didn't update it. I wanted to get it done because I knew that, you know, the town manager was going in for surgery on the first and I wasn't putting it off. And that's why that's what's in this book today. So the there is a different number. Um, what we have in that message is the superintendents. But what the Board of Ed came back with is on their sheet in the back. And they will be presenting, um, I believe they present on the 22nd. 22nd. I believe they present on the okay. 22nd. To you. Yeah. Yeah. And they could different. make changes between now and then also, correct? They can. They did last year. They yeah. did make changes. The health benefits piece still hasn't come in, I think, right? Um, um, he has the numbers. Okay. So I'm so not they could sure consider that. that. Yeah, they can consider that. I did just send them today the um OPEB numbers. So okay. And, yeah. It was did you send huge, it to us? I haven't checked my email. No, it wasn't a huge change. Okay. Our numbers have reflected in ours and uh, they actually was just fine tuning it. So I did send it up to the Board of Ed um, today just to let them know. It was a small decrease okay. for them, but it wasn't an increase. So that's all I was looking good, for, good. that it was it was staying basically almost flat. Okay, thank you. Um, but that, that's, that's the reason that this book is the way it is. I just wanted to give the heads up. That's kind of my overview of, of the process and the way everything works. Um, okay. I'll head right into the, my favorite part, which is the um, departmental reviews. So if you go to the general government section of your book, mm -hmm. it's the first real section kind of, I'll call it. You guys gotta get some of these tabs. I stuck them on today. Oh, sure. Show off. <laughs> I have electronics. You didn't tabs. bring enough for everyone. Me, 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 me. I do, I actually brought them with me. Uh, you want kind of chuckle where I used to work before when we sent the budget book it's out, we had to send a package of tabs with them. Oh, <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm going to do that because I was going to get confused. Yeah, right. Okay. That's, my, that's my job. It's tomorrow in the snowstorm. I will say we're following in the book one section after the other tonight. Well, it's easier. So that's were, easier. This, yeah. this, when we were skipping all over the place, yeah. it was really difficult. On Saturday, you definitely have your tabs ready because Saturday we're kind of going to be slipping everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the general governance section um, includes the town council, town manager, probate courts, elections, finance, town attorney, town clerk, um, records administration, personnel, and general services. Under general service, I'll tell you that is considered, you also have facilities and IT. Bigger than just, you know, you would think. What facilities? Facilities. Oh, just facilities. Just facilities in um, IT are under that also. 
So if you flip the page and you look at the personnel summary that we have in there, um, you'll notice, I know that uh, the town manager referenced that we are doing some staffing changes. On this page, you'll see that we're going up under the town manager's area from what is currently in the budget 4.5 to five. Um, there's some other little changes like down in finance, you'll see 11 to 10 and a half. What we're proposing in here is a full-time floater. Um, this person will be going between the town manager's office, my office, and the tax office during their busy time. Uh, we ended up taking out of our budget to try to accommodate this, the part-time money that I had, the part-time money the town manager had, and the seasonal money that was budgeted for the tax office. We really believe we've gotten part-time people before, but a full-time floater, it's the kind of person you can only have to train once and it's somebody that will know the areas. Uh, it, it, it really made sense for us not to, I, I've had part-time, they leave every couple of years, you're retraining somebody else. If you get a full-time person who's actually getting benefits, you only have to train them once and hopefully they stay for, for a while. Um, the other change in personnel you'll notice on here, um, if you go down to the town clerk area, uh, we are proposing a, a full-time person so there'll be one town clerk and two assistant town clerks um, instead of the three, um, instead of the two and a half, and now there'll be three. Uh, the part-time position um, we've taken out to help accommodate that to go towards funding that. The, it's really an only an increase of a half. It's only an increase of a half. Okay. Right. And the other area that you'll see down here is um, the IT department. They currently are authorized for four. We're going up to six. Uh, this is going to be uh, the GIS tech position that we're putting in there. That was a position that we had been contracting out to do some of it, but both the assessor's office um, and the engineering and a lot of the other departments says, no, we, we need more in-house staff for that. They're, they're kind of clamoring for that. So that was one ad. And the other position, um, that they're adding is another um, network application specialist. This is somebody that will start working on, on the million of projects and um, support some of the uh, wants and needs of the fire department and the police department, um, not specifically before them, everybody will be cross-trained, but as we find more of these projects come up, it gets harder for us to fill it with the people that we have. So that kind of gives you the overview. So when we get to the pages on the budgets on these, um, at yeah. some point, um, yeah. can I, not tonight, you don't have to, but um, it, can I get a sense of all the numbers and the titles of all the staff that have shed over the last year that we've lost that we didn't replace? So I can tell you off the top of my head um, that, uh, let me see here, we did not replace a, a records person in the fire and the uh, police department. Right. We did not replace Rob Hillman's position in highway when he got promoted. Okay. Um, the library, I know they put off hiring some people, but I don't know that we eliminated anything over no, there. No, right. Yeah, you know, I know there were, some there were just... two positions, because um, yeah. we've, we've talked about this, yeah. that people left for whatever reason, yeah. but they're still there, but they're, they we're not able. For this year. Right. Yeah. Because I thought the number I had heard, and I may have misheard it, mm -hmm. was up towards a million dollars in salaries that we've saved by not. Requiring. It was it was a little bit less than that, but there was some um, other things like um, when the deputy assessor um, retired, she came back now. And we're just using her as part time, mm -hmm. but it did save money. She's still there and that <laughs> position's still there, but it works out nicely for her because the busy time comes during, right. you know, the fall and the winter and then you come to summer and she she says oh i get my summers kind of she's off most of the summer so it it's a working relationship it's working well um there there was i trying to think where else we might have done anything we originally had done we got rid of the gis position which is coming back in that was another one we had just contracted out with i think it was south windsor if i remember right, right. and it, it that wasn't enough support for what we needed so it was like half the price and that was my concern which is mm -hmm. you know do we have the staff we need to do the business of the town? And you're answering it tonight, yes. so I'm just yeah. Kind of That's when we talked to the judges. Yep. I see you'll you'll see that we uh, we were addressing some areas that we found that we just can't go in that manner. There was also a position within building 
So um, a gentleman left planning and he moved over to work. Uh, I, he left the building and went over to work for planning and we didn't fill his position. That's another one I can think of. Off the top of my head, if I think of any of those, I'll, I'll definitely know. Right, From my memory, those were the most I didn't expect you to do it tonight. I just, thank you. It's just trying to remember, but I'll write a note just in case I remember anybody else. Thanks. So the first department we're going over is um, the town council. And this one, it, although it looks like it's a decrease in total, it's actually flat to the current year budget. We had to put some additional funds in there. If you remember when we did the mid-year transfers to uh, kind of cover the significant amount of um, part-time for uh, the clerk that we were having and um, some of the public notifications. So um, that's the reason why it looks like a decrease, but it's a decrease to the revised budget and it actually is flat to the original budget. So there was no real changes in that budget for this year, at least for this year. The dues and subscriptions is just briefly, what is that? The dues and subscriptions, I wanna remember who we were paying under there. Is that CCM? CCM might be under there. Any of the subscriptions we have to any of the different state agencies or the, the, are, are covered under there. I think CCM is the big one, actually. Because that's just the biggest number, so it yeah. caught my attention. That's yeah, it. yeah. Okay. And last year, we kind of got a, if you notice the dues and subscription, the actual for the year before that is lower. They gave us a break because of COVID. So gotcha. they, they said, hey, don't pay part of the subscription, but now we're back up to right. their normal amount. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the tabs over to the left hand of the page, you'll see kind of the previous, the 2020-2021 actual. So what it really ended up being, not what we passed, but what it ended up being. And then the original budget that was um, passed in 2021-2022, and then the revised is um, where we're at or what we know to be true, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So those would include those major transfers that uh, you guys authorized um, last month. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. So if we're good on that one, we'll head over to the town manager one. Um, this is where you'll see um, within the salary line that uh, uh, full-time floater position we were just discussing. And this is uh, that's what's included there along with the staff wage increases for the year. You'll see the part-time position that goes down that was the um, originally budget this year. Uh, included in that was the part-time person that they were sharing with me along with uh, what we put in there last year for the assistant town manager because we weren't sure if it was going to be part-time or full-time. So that is not included in here. Uh, the other decrease you'll notice is the consultant. Now it's flat to the original budget, but the decrease is to the revised one. Uh, we did not put the grant writers in here. So if that's something you want to consider, I want to bring it to your attention now that we can oh. include it. We should be including it in here. So it's not in here now. We would have to add it. The salary for the grant well, Let's writer. put a star next to that one. Yep. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, this year, part of their salary is being charged here. Well, part of their commission is being charged here. And part of it is actually being paid out of um, my ARPA grant. And okay. they help me with anything on that. And that consultant served in what capacity for what project? Well, they're the grant writers. They write, they're the, they're ones, write the grants. They're the grant oh, writers. Really so if the department ever... wants a grant, they would go to, or the consultant, consultants would say, we have a grant out here for this. Maybe you might want to apply for it. Yeah. But the new grant writer you're saying was not. That, this yeah. is the new grant writer. This we is the new grant writer. So, I thought you said it wasn't here. I'm sorry. No, it's not in here. Right. It's not in here zero, for the proposal. So I was yep. wondering about yep. that. Thank you. Thank you. Can you clarify the... Assistant town manager position. It's not in the new it's budget. Not in. Okay. It's not in. So Once again, I know it's something you've been discussing. Yes. Yep. So mm -hmm. um, we also do have, um, if that's something you want to pursue, I know that Heather has the um, job description that was the original job description. On um, mimeograph? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and go through, but there is one there. So that position was created. So yeah. that would be under, under section 8101? Yeah. That would be full-time if that's what you uh, propose to do. That is something that I would like to consider at least. So um, if you could bring forward 
um, figures for half and full. Um, and uh, if you could provide us with the job description just to review. Yep. Um, you know, I, I know the town manager talks often about succession planning for the town and making sure that we're looking within for positions. If we if we have people that are qualified and able to move up, then it makes sense for us to be kind of grooming within and, and developing people. Um, and so this is an area where I would be looking to see if, and we had talked about this in the past. So um, for me, that would be a priority for us to look at um, filling so we can certainly get those figures and then consider. Can you also put in the um, consultant for the grants? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I, I'll give you the amount you yes. guys would have. And then to we would add it. it. Yep. 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 Thank you. Mayor Yes. If I may, this Talk is just a you. technical thing. Mm -hmm. I'm at this end of the table. I can hear you, but Pat's there. I have to read lips. I have hearing aids. And of course, some people I can't see. I don't know if anything can be done about it. But over time, I'm, I can I'm lost unless I, I sit down there, which I don't want to do. I'll, I'll turn the volume up a little bit more. Let's see if it picks up in the room for you. Okay, thank you. Mike, a little bit closer. That's me how. She pulled it off the contact to. paper. It helped. Um, Anything else? It's under town manager. Okay. Move on to the next one. The next one is probate court. There was no changes to this. Um, Dave, is that better for you? Can you hear that or not? I'll have to hear a little bit more. Okay. To, to see. So this one um, is staying steady this year. There was no increases when I talked to the probate court. They expected the budget to stay the same. We share the cost with two other towns um, and the percentage is split based on our grand list. So just so you know, good thing if our grand list goes up, sometimes areas like this, our expenses go up with it. Um, nothing huge here. This is a very small budget. Okay. Just not that I wanted to spend a ton of time down at probate court, but I mean, there's there's a, a ton of people down there. And it's only costing us like 33 grand. Grand, yep. But, but they get fees for, they get fees when you file a probate. That's the West View fees. Yeah, we, we're only funding part of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes, I, yes, I remember the fees. <laughs> remember those fees? You had to yeah. pay, yes, yeah. yes. Those and there are a lot of fees. There are a lot of, they chased me down for an $18 invoice. Four times. Um, if we're good on that, the next one is elections. Um, elections had some increases, uh, nothing too major. Uh, in salaries, there was an increase that was just a wage increase for uh, those positions. The big change is if you look under other contractual services, they were hiring a moving company to move the election equipment. And it, um, there's also an increase. This is where we pay the poll workers. So we were finding this past year <coughs> that we have a poll worker for a full day. And when you divide it by what we were paying them, the um, hourly rate <laughs> was, was not minimum wage. So that had to be increased. Okay. Do you know, just off the top of your head, we all use this, um mythological figure of it costs thirty four thousand dollars to do an election with these changes do you know what it will go up to um i can tell you right now what they have in the elections right now so if you want to take other contractual services and take out about five thousand for the moving equipment and, and maybe actually take it down to ten you're probably in the right when you say about thirty five thirty six thousand for the poll workers because right now they have within there for the poll workers that's your big expense so then you have to add on the just let me go through it. So if you're looking at the 71,000, I'd say take 10 off, bring it down to 60 for the poll workers. They have uh, two events planned in there. They have the election and then they have a primary planned in there. So right in that number, you say 60,000, that's two they're putting in there. Then you would also have to add in um, probably the printing and the binding. Um, any of the equipment maintenance. So it's probably when you're coming right down to it, it's probably between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. Yep. An event. And, and no, I'm sorry. And that includes the um, moving company to be hauling the equipment back and forth and everything. Yeah. Okay. So it's really stayed pretty. Yeah. It's about there. Okay, thank you. You really shouldn't include the regular staff because they're there whether you have an event or not. Okay, thank you. Yep. That, that should probably know the answer, but 
Could we get someone in house to move the equipment? I mean, how much equipment? They is? were doing. I, I don't know if this was a discussion that Therese did have with facilities about moving the equipment. And I think there was concern about having our in-house staff do it. Right. Um, but I, I will double check. I remember her saying something to me about it. Okay, thank you. Yep. And once again, if there are any questions when I go through these and I don't know the answer, I will write them down and I will get you guys the answer. I remember talking to Teresa about that item. And yeah. I believe part of the concern was the sheer number of hours. I think she said it took like 10, 12, 15 yeah. hours to legitimately move everything, set it up yeah. at all the different locations. It's a pretty yeah, expensive. Suppose it would take a while. When we yeah. have seven, eight polling locations, it's pretty expensive. And to, I, I know and it was. That would tie up all of our facilities, guys, for that purpose for like a day and a half, two days. Yeah. So I think. We don't have a lot of facilities, guys. Yeah. yeah. And, and she did speak to, right. to uh, the facilities director about this. And he was the one that suggested, uh, suggested this yeah. alternative mm -hmm. and that he'd used at other towns too. Um, but I can double check and see comparison of what it would have cost us to do it here, and what Joe thinks it would have been, and the actual cost to have this company do it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Good on elections. Yes. All right. Now we head over actually into my department, finance. Um, there's an increase for salaries. That's just the staff increase contractual. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll see the part-time amount has been eliminated. That's part to pay for that uh, full-time floater I was talking to you guys about. And the only other change is a small increase for our equipment maintenance. That's our copier cost went up. Okay. Any questions, folks? Okay. We're all, All right. We're heading into assessor here. Um, once again, there's not a huge changes in the assessor. Um, the salary increase is all for the staff. Once I said contractual, you'll see the longevity um, went up by 50. That's once again, a uh, union contractual for longevity um, increase. And the only in other increase, which um, he tried to bring down conferences and other as you cover was dues and subscriptions, um, the DMV uh, up their price uh, to get any information from them. So when he's looking into those cars that where do they belong and stuff like that, that's the system he's got to use. Okay. Any questions, counselors? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go with that one. All right. Board of Assessment Appeals, there was no change here at all. All right. Thank you. Revenue collection. Um, once again, salary increase for the staff. Um, you'll notice the decrease for the seasonal to go towards um, paying for that full-time floater that we were proposing. Um, she had a slight increase from dues and subscriptions and she offset that actually with the meetings and conferences. Um, you'll notice the elderly tax relief program. That's put in here simply because it is a tax rebate. It's nothing she controls. Um, this used to be when I first started here, half the state took it and half was the towns. Now it's totally dumped on the town to pay the full amount. So it's a program that's administered between the assessor's office and the senior center to try to get all the elderly in uh, for tax relief. Mm -hmm. They take applications. We administer it all here, mm -hmm. but the amount is put in the revenue collector because it's based on revenue. But she has, it looks like a huge number. You're like, what is she doing with that? It, it's nothing she has control over. Mm -hmm. Where did the veteran benefit fall? Is it in That's, a different line? Veteran benefit is actually revenue that we receive directly from the state. So you'll okay. see it under the revenue one. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So we give the discount appropriately to the veteran and the state reimburses us? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But for the elderly program, they stopped giving us anything. We still have to report to them. Funny. <laughs> to me yeah. Yeah. So. And just the veterans rebate, is that a one for one? I'm not sure. I can find out. And, and each, I've been asking about this because I'm on the Veterans Commission, and it the rate is different in different towns around the yeah. state. It's not consistent, and that's one of the things that I know um, the commission at the state level is working on. That's one of the things that they're targeting. Yeah, something that's on my agenda list for us to take a look at at least. Um, because it's, it's been a lot of years. Amount we get it's small, okay. it is right. that that actually that came up 
during yeah. one one person in particular who addressed that to me during the campaign. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking about it and realized I thought it was consistent across the state and yeah. it's not. Yeah, that's I mean, we only get like, I want to say somewhere in the 20 something thousand. It's it's, it's not a huge minimal. amount. It's minimal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, the next page is auditing. Uh, we are in the last year of the contract next year with our auditing firm. We will be going out to RFP. Um, so whoever's on the audit committee, um, that's when we get together and we get to interview everybody. Uh, this is the contractual increase for this last year. Okay, any questions? All right. There was no change to uh, purchasing that saved flat. All right, so no questions. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Why was there no change? <laughs> To that whole thousand dollar budget, I know. <laughs> um, town attorney, there was no change to this line either. These amounts stayed flat, they stayed the same. And now we get to James' department. Uh, we have the you'll notice, you'll see uh, the switch here, you'll see the full time salary line going up. That includes the new full time position, along with wage increases for current staff. Um, then you'll see in the part-time line that the money has been eliminated for the part-time line to help fund some of that. Um, small increase to seasonal, that's just an hourly weight increase, increase, and then other contractual, um, just so you know what's in there, um, is uh, Atkins, um, the copier lease, land records audit, and uh, general code maintenance. Um, James handles a lot of that out of there. Can I ask just maybe James a question? I just in the table. Sure. There's a huge. To me, it seems a significant jump between 1920 the and revenue. 2021. Well, actually, well, the documents recorded, the revenue, the conveyance tax. What? It has been a very busy two years. We've seen many individuals refinancing. Uh, the increase in documents has really taken its toll. But as you can see, our conveyance tax and those sales has increased significantly. Uh, we're actually on track to possibly even beat last year at this point as well. Oh, you definitely are. Yeah. You definitely are. It's, 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 I mean, he already, he hit his budget number. I think by the time we hit January, he was already over his budget number. We're seeing some significant revenue on that side. All money's coming into our, okay, all right. Yeah, so for Councilor Page and Councilor Rad, I didn't think to point out that there's that up, that upper page. Yeah, yeah it does provide the highlights. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, so the figures you. are what we tend to focus on in our discussion, but then that first page above is the change. objectives and the major budget changes. It really does elucidate more of the facts. Thank you. Yes. Because we are a very front-facing office, the revenue that comes in separate from the revenue collector, um, that does tend to jump up or come down quite a bit, depending on what's going on in the economy. So, so this would be if, if the housing market is take as it's taken off. It, if you look it, back, it say, but if it goes, if it falls, then it goes. It's Take a look at again. sixteen, seventeen. While we had less documents, we did have a significant conveyance tax. Mm -hmm. Where we're looking now, we're looking at just the July through December of 2020 to, uh, 20, 2021 to twenty twenty two you're almost to that entire conveyance amount in six months. So, yeah, it has been a very- You think you need another staff member? <laughs> and really quiet for us. <laughs> on top of everything else and on top of Zoom meetings, yeah. And if the I big sale about Zoom well. meetings, James. And I've been getting, getting rid of them. <laughs> partially too tired of <laughs> so anything else on this one? You will see when we do revenue, you will see we try to take a five-year average because okay, you want yeah. you want to smooth right. out the highs and the lows, right, right, right. so I don't give James some kind of goal that he could never meet never again. Never reach that, yeah. <laughs> yes. Less is ten percent. All right, we're all set with that one. Okay, personnel. Once again, personnel looks like it's like decreasing fourteen thousand nine hundred sixty. It's really not. It's flat to the current original budget. Um, this is the line that we did some mid-year transfers to. Uh, there's, uh, we tried to stick more with the three or four year average on this, but what ends up happening is the turnover with police. 
So uh, the police have a lot of testing that they have to do um, between the polygraphs and the um, background. background personnel. So uh, you guys saw the officers that were retiring were now having this department hit, and that's why we had to get the transfer. We're not anticipating, knock on wood, that next year is like that again. Not gonna, I know, please. Hopefully they'll see how innovative our police department is and everyone will want to work here and right. we won't have any more. I know, right? that would, I, I'm hoping for, the, for their sake, yes. All right, All right, so we're good with that one. We're moving on to general services. Yep, and okay. this is where we hit the facilities department. Um, <clears throat> this past year, during this year, they're even interviewing. I, I don't know if they've made a final decision. They did uh, look, and I know they... Uh, approach you guys about putting a person in um, as the, the facilities director's kind of assistant on some of these projects and stuff like that. So when you look at that full-time salary, you'll see it goes up. That's that position along with the raises for everybody within that department. Um, that is being offset though, with the amount that we took out of other contractuals. Other contractuals originally had the money that you guys put in there this year. Um, to hire an outside contractor to handle some of the work that Owens had on their list. Um, and that person is now being replaced by the permanent person. So instead of contractual, it's the full-time person um, on board. Uh, and that's, I'm sorry, pardon my ignorance on this. That's for engineering purposes? That's for the projects themselves, overseeing the project projects. Management. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, I don't know if Joe will be doing the project management or the assistant will be, but one way or the other, they will be working in conjunction, trying to handle that along with the staff there because there was so many projects on Owen's list mm -hmm. um, to try to cover that originally we wanted to have an outside contractor do it. And uh, we changed our mind and, and then brought the person in house. Thanks. Um, you'll see utilities taking a little spike here. Um, I did talk to the facilities director about this line. Uh, there's a potential maybe for that to come down. We're not sure. They're, they're waiting to see once we put, um, with everything going on with the economy and stuff, they're waiting to see what happens also when we put the solars on the roof. Um, they're designing it. They're getting it. So although he's taking a very conservative view, um, he's hoping that comes in better um, than planned. But that's why we're seeing the jump there. Uh, equipment. This utility is electricity. Utilities is electricity. Hundred under that one. Let me just see here. It's yeah, not, it's, it's mainly it's gas. mainly it's mainly electricity. So this building, although it's great on fuel and stuff, it's all electricity. So as as things as we get the solar, he's hoping that kind of alleviates some of that since this is gonna be one of the first buildings. Um, well, I said we did take money out of, uh, you'll notice uh, other contracted services. That did go down, not as much as you would think it would should go down because we had the new cleaning service we brought on. We did the RFP for them. That new cleaning service cost us uh, approximately 10,000 more per month than the old one did. Yeah, it's, so that's why, although you still see a reduction and Joe found other ways to do a reduction of 31,000, that's why it's not more um, because we had to bring them. And, and from what I'm hearing from all departments and everybody, the buildings, they're thrilled with this new service. Did they do a library as well? Because I know the library had issues. They did. Okay. They did. Yeah, the old service, you get, you know, you get what you pay for and it, I guess it wasn't good. But you're so, talking about the senior center too, right? Yes. You're talking about the contractual services line? The other contractual services. But if I'm, I'm I don't want to misunderstand it. That number went down. Correct. That's a good thing. That we moved out, but I just mentioned to you, we moved out the money that we put in there for the contractor for Owens. Okay. And that went up to salary line. I you would you. think it would have gone down a little bit more, but we did right. have. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a combination. All right. That's why it's not a huge decrease that we kind of would have saw if we were sticking with our old cleaning service. Gotcha. What does the cleaning service cover? Because I know we have some they custodial do. staff on yep. town staff. Yep. So um, they do down the rec, like the old town hall, okay. they do the rec area. They do the senior center. They do the police department. They do the library. I uh, believe they do highway and they do parks. Okay. 
And I'm probably yeah, I mean, I my brain too. I'm, could we do it in house? But 120, you average that out to a year. That increases would only cover like one or two people. Perhaps, we did. Um, when I first got here, we did have another part time person mm -hmm. that was working, um, helping out in just the town hall area, which was good. But you, you just couldn't keep a regular part time person. It right. just was a lot of turnover and a lot of issues. Um, so we, they kind of consolidated in that. Um, another good area you'll notice in here is heating fuel. That did go down $52,000, um, which was awesome. When I was reviewing this um, budget with the facility director, we found that, you know, we hadn't really put in the calculation because we hadn't been in here a year, how much we'd save being in this building. And he also found in last year's budget, we had a duplicate because when we were building the old one and we had this one open, we were at some point heating Be two both. buildings at the same time. Right. So when we was looking at the actuals, it was kind of skewing the actuals because we had heating for about <coughs> eight to nine months of both buildings. And I was a, as a residential, you know, my small house, I can join the co-op, the oil co-op and get a Harbor Freight, I mean, a Harbor, Harbor Price. Is there something equivalent at a large quantity that where we get We a, are we right don't... now locked in. So okay. they go out periodically. Currently we are locked in for the oil for, I believe through the full fiscal year next goodness, year. Wow. Given the mm -hmm. turmoil in the world. We are not <laughs> locked in when we get to highway on diesel, diesel. And, oh. and, and regular. So we're getting hammered. We, we might get hammered. That's when you're going to see the increase there. Um, we are only locked in, I think, until December. But at our quantity, it's fair to say that relative to the rest of the market, we get a better deal. Because, yes. Okay. Yes. My husband's pickup truck cost like $140 to fill up the other day. Whoa. That's great. Insane. Jenna, I was going to ask in the beginning, but Keith didn't get to that part. And under assumptions, you know, where mm -hmm. he assumes what the utilities is and what the fuel and whatever. Um, given, well, actually, even the announcement today, are you going to make adjustments, the yeah. assumptions, yeah. so that what we'll, we'll actually have to do? We're done way back when we started this book before, as I said, like February 22nd, before Ukraine and everything started to happen. So, yes. So I think it, it In the finalized book, before we put the finalized book, we'll be updating any of the assumptions. And um, which here. will translate through to whatever yeah. line items needed, because I think it's going to be at least for the year, definitely not be done. Yeah. That. Okay, thank you. Mm. All right. Any other questions on facilities? I think we're good. Okay. Um, this is central services. Um, this handles like our postage machine and um, maintenance on some of our equipment. There's nothing huge in here. And this one basically is, is a wash. We had a $60 reduction. It's a decrease, Janet. Yeah. Whole, whole, <laughs> whole 60 bucks. 60 we'll bucks take it. We'll, we'll take it. Won't fill gas, as we said, in many Every people's cars. <laughs> <laughs> <But. laughs> um, the next one is the IT department. Um, you'll see right away the salary, which I told you, um, the jump, that's for two people, along with the salary increase for all the current staff. Um, Telephones has an increase. Um, this is due to uh, some additional 15 mobile devices being added for the uh, fire department and an increase in the rates from both Cox and Frontier. Equipment maintenance. Um, you'll see the big jump there. These are where he says equipment maintenance. This is where they pay for the uh, software maintenance, I'll call them. So like Munis is paid for in there. They had a jump. Uh, quality, which is a system that the assessors and tax office had a uh, jump, um, and any of the other software maintenance for any of the other departments. Uh, they typically, usually, a jump per year is anywhere from two to five percent in the cost for the software and any different kind of cost. So you're seeing that um, hit there pretty hard. And um, is Questions? part of that, did you already say this, is part of that? making sure that we're zipped up tight and safe from yep. hacking. So and you'll see in there too, if they have any kind of firewalls or anything like that, if the price goes up for those, those are included, they're paid for in there. Thanks. The other contractual services where you see that decrease for the 45, that's the amount that got taken out that we used to be um, contracting out with South Windsor for their GIS person. 
So that kind of that other item. Yeah. Yep. Shifted over to um, the full time person that they're bringing us. Okay. Can we talk about? Um, I guess this is where it would fall. Um, in terms of looking at our website, um, possibly either consulting out or getting it out of the ARPA funds, you know, if that has been included in this budget or that something. Be budget if it's coming out of the ARPA funds. Okay. Has that been done though? Not much, no. So, so if, add we it to the agenda to, list. if we wanted to do something next year, yeah, uh, in terms of revamping the website, I, I did have this discussion, just so you know, with the IT director, and it's great, you know, to think about, but we really have to think of a long-term solution. You can mm -hmm. revamp this website, but if the department heads aren't updating it, right, it becomes useless. Um, so I think it's a definite, it's not just revamping it, but it's maybe putting together, so it's a kind of long-term policy, putting together some kind of responsibility to make sure that each area is updating it. Because IT doesn't have a person right. just sitting dedicated. around dedicated yeah. to updating each department's area. Like I send stuff up maybe, you know, once or twice a year to them saying, hey, can you upload this for me? But that's about it. But in terms of the public's concerns about it not being like user friendly or whatever, would that be, I mean, if, if we wanted to consider something, that would be more of a consultant type of yeah. thing. Um, because once the project's done, do you really need to keep somebody on staff? On staff. And yeah. I know we don't have the um, luxury of having people on staff right now, but we're really uh, yeah, um, looking to do what, what we've heard that the public wants and, done. And, 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 that was talking to me, he goes, great idea, I'd love to do it, but you have to get all the department heads involved, not me, because as we, each department will want something different or think theirs should be revamped a different way. Um, Is there an opportunity though of, of looking at the ARPA funds for this year to get a real quick RFP oh, on that? And stay for the next two or three oh, years. Okay. So, so yeah, we, yep. we haven't even gotten the second <laughs> second funding of that. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I still. appreciate that, uh, Councilman Draco, because I think, and we have heard from so many folks and I know for a number of reasons, that would be great. And it's it's just the future of doing business digitally more and more and more, so it makes sense. I wonder if the current vendor that we use could be consulted in looking at. I think there was, um, I, and I have to go back to, to Paul and ask him, mm. um, but we did have some discussion regarding when we originally put this in, there was some other things we could have added or put on top, but we went through the cheaper version and that might not have been. Right. So that might be an avenue to look at too. Yeah. Yeah. I added it to our agenda list just so we can kind of discuss it with the town manager and see if we can either get an update at a future agenda or um, in a memo or some some way, shape, or form get it started. So yeah. thanks. Okay. Let's see here. Well, that's the end of the general government. Now we head on over into public safety. Safety includes the police, the fire department, street lighting, emergency management, um, emergency medical service, and believe it or not, hydrants um, mm -hmm. falls under this too. On the next page, which is personnel, there was no changes made to personnel um, in this area. Uh, there was um, some kind of shifting within the fire marshal's department, but nothing was actually um, yeah. Was changed in regard to full time position. Point to assistant chief. Assistant chief. Mm -hmm. Is that a temporary? Yeah, temporary. Right. So, so come fires. come July first, that okay. position's. Um, yeah, he's going to officially retire. Retire. Come July first, he's just it's just temporary. He's just in that position to help um, Chief Clark get through hiring a lot of new people piece, yeah. and trying to get all the other things done. Or the uh, temporary. Right. Yeah. So if it will be there if, if we ever want to fill it in the future. But it's not planned. It's in the yes. classification. It's yeah. Yeah. Right. But it's just not funded for an extra now. Gotcha. Okay. So um, no new personnel here. And the chief didn't request any new either. He I'm looking not. at the request. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think he's having <laughs> a problem just filling, just what, filling he has. what he has. I know. So yeah. yeah. Get back to full staff, he'd be happy. That yeah. has been the conversation yes. I've had with him in the past, I know. So yeah. Okay. So with under um, the first department with under police is police administration. Uh, the full-time salary increase is um, just the uh, 
people currently on staff. And just so you know, in that department, there's not a lot of people, but what ended up happening last year when we did the budget is the increases for salaries. Um, the contract wasn't done. So the increases for salaries was in the contingency department. Or is that retro? Um, no, it's not retro. It's just the fact that this includes two years of raises for just this department because of the fact their contract had been filed. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. So when you look at contingency, when we get to the contingency line, you're going to see it decrease. Gotcha. Those are the money I also uh, had you guys do the mid-year transfers for, but we moved that full amount for that just over and we can move it around as we see fit within police when we get there. We moved it over to the police, um, the officers, uh, uh, I don't know if it's full time, I think full time line just to cover because that's where we think he's going to have the most difficulties mm. this year. Um, but just to make you aware, because um, you're thinking how many people are there and it's 20,000, it's because it's for two years. It is the, uh, the overtime line seems pretty light. That is, and it's typically, if you look back, you see the actual from the year before. In admin, they don't have a lot of overtime. If you look back, you see the oh, this is that that right. Yep. Yep, this is admin. Okay. So it's not till you get to the police officers where you start to see the big numbers. Right. Was, and I and I'm good. and dispatch. And I will say this year, and as I mentioned to you guys during the mid-year transfers, he's already gone over his budget amount, I believe, That's in so February many people sick, time. Uh sick, retired. And yep. Yeah. It was he Working he was down injuries. eight people at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was the over when we'd get the payroll, the overtime was just like. Yeah, we answer. consider. I feel like for several years now we've considered adding staff to meet needs, but the ability to fill those positions has been so difficult Thanks. that overtime is where it. We just unfortunately kind of overutilize the people we have because that's who we have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's. Oh, there it is. Found <laughs> it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I don't want to flip the page. The patrol. The patrol department. Um, once again, you're seeing increases for salary. It's just. Um, there's, and you're seeing the overtime right now. Uh, he did increase it. This is a big overtime area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's basically, once again, the salary because of the negotiated contract increase you're seeing. There wasn't too many other um, changes within here. Does overtime also include um, the police officers who are uh, contracted for a four no. hour shift or an eight hour shift? For out? special duty? No. Right. Nope. Okay, that's a separate line. Yep. Okay. Well, that, you won't even see that in here because special Why? Because duty. The, 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 the You'll see it as a revenue. Pays the fee? Yeah, the yeah. customer pays so the fee. I mean, it's a net. It's you'll a net see it when we get to revenue. It's a when you, yeah, when you get to revenue, you'll see some you. of that coming you. in um, over there. But it's kind of uh, outside service, alarm services, stuff like that. that Thank you. Yep. So, um, as I said, patrol, not too much change besides salaries. That's all contractual changes because of the new contract. Um, I will be giving you, after we're done budget, an update on where we stand on expenses with an update for the police department. Because um, I know it, it's it's he's he's trudging along, but it's yeah. it's not a pretty picture. Yeah. Um, this is police investigation. Once again, you've got the contracted increases for both the salaries. Not much else going on. Um, his department is actually pretty quiet besides the salary that we're, uh, we're saying uh, needs uh, the contract updated. What's the technical supplies? It's just a little increase, but. The technical supplies? Um, I believe, let me just see if I put down under here. Looking up here to see. It's the last bullet on the truck. Yeah, it's on the thing. It's increased for the price of the drug kits. Oh, oh got it. Yep. Oh. And then for the UBS computer drives to store seized phone. Oh. Data. Okay. They usually put pretty good. Uh, I know the police department puts some really good explanations on the page. Um, they actually gave cheat sheets to us too. So they, were, <laughs> they were awesome. The Cliff Notes version. Awesome. Um, the next one is the traffic department. Once again, you're going to see just a small increase for salaries. The rate changes. Mm -hmm. Nothing else um, really going on there. That's pretty flat. This is actually where we pay for the crossing guards, just so you know. Mm. Oh, okay. So paid out of part-time? Yeah, they get paid out of part-time. Any other questions? Okay. We're good. 
And the next one is a dispatch communication. Once again, they're in the same um, contract with the, P, uh, the PD. So uh, you'll see the salaries and overtime rates uh, go up due to the contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. okay. And believe it or not, the uh, dues and subscriptions go up because they purchased city phone directories yeah. for the New Britain and Hartford. I kind of laughed when I saw that. I'm like, they actually sense. still have those, <laughs> but they do. Why is it doing it? Yeah. It's not digital. It's not. I don't know. When I asked, I said, you guys are actually buying city phone directories. And they said, yeah. So I don't know if it's actual paper or. But maybe it's a safety backup and they have to yeah. have a copy. It must be an online system. It goes down. You need to look up. Safety backup. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, education and training. Just some small changes going on there. Um, the conferences, meetings, and trainings, uh, that did go up a little because I think they're, they're thinking once COVID is now done, they can actually start uh, gearing up a little bit more. And the technical supplies on this was uh, rising prices to replace the tasers at every five years. So you'll see the technical supplies went up $6,670. And it's just regarding to taser equipment. What do they do with the old ones? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they give the counselors to play around with <laughs> So <laughs> um, the next one being support services. Once again, uh, salary increases. Um, the overtime decreased due to the change in personnel. One of the people that had been in the position was at a higher rate, and the person replaced him as a lower one. Clothing allowance um, also went down. That was due, that's re uh, reflecting, I believe, a they didn't uh, fund one of the traffic officers. This is one of the decreases from that year, the traffic officer. So police officers get issued one or two uniforms? Or? Uh, per contract, they get uniforms, they get- um, Shoes. Shoes, ammo, yep. vest. Uh, it's all in their contractually what they're, they have to give them. Okay. Police vehicles, the maintenance, the state flat. It seems low. Yeah, they haven't used too much of it yet, yet this year. So this isn't a line that they're in danger of. Is this maintenance done by our folks or maintenance done by um, outside? Depends. Depends on 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 the, the how much work our in house we have or how technical it might be. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming replacement of vehicles would be listed under the other. Now, now the new vehicles are now. We move the vehicles yeah, under CIP now. Right. We moved them right. last year under CIP. So okay. you'll see them there on the 19th. And is okay. that part of that rotational process right. that the town manager yes. spoke yep. of? Okay. In the vehicle replacement program. Right. Yeah. That's the 19th. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> Woohoo. Woo yeah. Animal control. <laughs> Animal control, you'll see here um, a little decrease. When we originally did the, con uh, the uh, budget last year, we hadn't had the uh, total written agreement with Weathersfield in place yet. But when we did, um, we were able to look at this year and say, okay, here's the salary we're given. They are actually definitely taking half of it. So that's why you're seeing a little bit of a, a reduction. We moved it out of part-time and moved it up into full-time because this is a full-time person. And we bill Weathersfield twice a year for their half. Okay. You share a animal control officer with us. Yep. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Okay, any questions? I'll start with that one. Moving on to a new, what's next? Fire. fire department. So you'll see the personnel um, page is the next thing for the fire department. Yep. Uh, you'll see that they are authorized for six under the fire administration. They were looking for seven. Um, that seventh, that one extra person was the IT person they wanted specifically just for them. And we said, eh, you know, let's have an IT person that you can actually share. I don't know that you personally, and that would fall under the IT department that we could also utilize, mm -hmm. um, help the PD and other mm -hmm. areas too. They'd all be cross trains. We said, we're not saying this person specifically for that, but to help out. Mm -hmm. So we removed it from there and added it to the IT department when we were reviewing these. The other change, which I kind of mentioned to you is the uh, fire marshal. He was looking for some more part-time help to keep on going with all the um, reviews they have to do. That position had really had been in there before, and then they cut it last year. 
and um, the new Still behind, right? Yeah, the new inspections of buildings. Yeah, now the new now the new fire marshals like they cut that out before I got here, and, and I need that. So he was asking for it no, back. And the commissioners' yeah. meetings we went to said they they were doing a nice job catching up on all yeah. this. Yeah. They are doing a great job. Guys doing yes. It. Just and so that's everybody gonna be knows, that. Chief Traumer as well as Commissioner Whalen are on the call if we did need to ask any okay. questions or anything like that. So, um, fire administration, um, not too much of a change here. You're seeing the full time salary, that's just the contractual increase and the rate increase for the part timers. Transportation, you see the decrease. Um, we issued all of the um, Chiefs and deputy chiefs, we uh, issued all of them town vehicles. And dues and subscriptions, same thing with long, with the COVID break and then no more COVID break. Yeah, they, they, like they have some dues and subscriptions, they're increased for an addition of a state uh, state fire department meetings. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the transportation is because all the chiefs now have town vehicles mm -hmm. and they fill up there. We used to be reimbursing each one of them for gas, a uh, set amount every month. So. That was an insurance issue, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we thought it better if they're heading to a fire that they were an official vehicle. Um, so as some of the um, police vehicles came offline, they uh, right. fixed them up and, and gave them over to the fire department. We it just took us a little while to get all, all of them all equipped. Of them, right. Yep. The firefighters. Um, Technical supplies, just so you know, that varies each year depending on what, they, um, what they're looking to get. So for this year, I'm just trying to find their list to give you an idea because you'll see that that has a little bit of a, a bump under that one. Um, the technical equipment they're looking for this year are um, stuff like door plates at all the uh, company headquarters. Um, they also had, uh, they mentioned there was Whatever foam that they had, I guess, in the fire extinguishers, it, it wasn't right and they couldn't use it. So they have to replace all of it. So that's one of the additional expenses. Um, it was a state, it's an unfunded state mandate regarding oh, the I foam. I think that was, I remember last year, um, all that foam, after the um, the incident at Bradley, yeah, Bradley, all that foam mm -hmm. went went into yeah. the rivers and yeah, they had. They, so so they the state saying all of you have to replace it. They're yeah. not giving us any money, right. but they so. Replace, yeah. So there, that's some of the new things coming through this year that we hadn't had before. Um, and then general, the, the, the regular supplies that they uh, look to get. And uniforms bumped up, was that? Uh, uniforms, we did ask about that. And that's bumped up due to um, the cost is just increased for stuff like the boots and the mask and the, the jackets and everything. On line 8217, it's like, what the heck? And, um, it was, you know, in the 20,000, 20,000. Then they asked for 111,000. Yeah, that, that's where they put in. Um, they didn't realize they didn't put in CIP for uh, they need a new firehouse software. And so they originally put it in here under consultant special contractors. We moved it out. So you'll see it now under CIP. So that's why I went back down. So that was just a little bump as... We don't like to see projects in here because it makes the numbers right weird. Or to keep it in CIP. So when we get to CIP, you will see that they are requesting um, some new software. Okay. I guess all the firehouses are moving off whatever software they have, and and they're got to go along to. Okay. I know, like I mentioned, Chief Traumer's on. Chief, I am watching just in case you did want to weigh in. If I, if I see your hand, I'll I'll know. Yeah. I just want to let you know the uh, firehouse software actually goes out of. Um, they they call it life uh, at the end of this year, which is December thirty first. So we have to go with a new software. We're actually looking at a software called Alpine Red NMX, which is a way that we do reporting for NIFRs and stuff like that. So that is the reason why we have to do it because it's no longer it's it's at its end of life at this this uh, December thirty first. Okay. okay, thank you for that explanation. Okay, it's under CIP now. Yes, you'll see it under CIP. Okay. Where it should be, I suppose. Um, and then the ongoing maintenance after um, after we install it and get it in place, that will move under IT like all the other software does. Okay. So the maintenance costs yearly will go under there. 
Um, no real change to fire prevention. It's other materials, slight increase for um, rising prices in some of the materials, but besides that, it's stayed flat. This is one of those where you see the percent and you go, oh, but 9% yeah. of a yeah. low amount is yeah. not right. a big increase. And if you look from the actuals from 2020 to 21, it was like $750. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, fire training. Um, a slight increase there. It was for the um, addition there. They, they call them props. Chief Traumer can probably tell you a little more of what they are, um, but they're for the training equipment and stuff like that. They have to have and uh, technical equipment. They had to get a new window rescue prop as well as a, st a storage container um, <coughs> to keep at the department training uh, to put all the props and the equipment in. Chief, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, so those training props are like uh, real life situations that we can do with, uh, that guys can train with, instead of like burning a house or uh, breaking a window. It's actually a prop that they make that we can use to to simulate uh, going through a window or whatnot. So it's it's just a prop that we use. Um, it's good for training of our new members so that they learn how to do certain things. Okay, good. Thank you. Any council questions? Just one question about uniforms. Sure. I don't know if the chief could just say, did we buy, uh, it looks like the price for uniforms went up. We bought more uniforms. I'm all in favor of people having uniforms. I was just curious about, it seemed like a $20,000 jump. Well, the, the increase in uniforms, actually we just moved some line items around. So it may look like a major increase, but we, we moved some masks, some helmets and stuff into uniforms where it used okay. to be under something else before. So the number looks like it went up drastically, but it really didn't. If you look through the last year's budget to this year's budget, the numbers stayed about the same. We just kind of moved the line items around a little bit. That's fine. Well, masks are pretty darn important. So thanks. Any other questions? All right. Um, next is uh, fire stations. Um, this building improvements, you notice it kind of goes here and there depending on what they need for the year. Um, this year for when we look for building improvements, um, this is to do a, a bathroom and kitchen, a flooring at company five, and it's for the um, headquarters. I don't want to show you how to say this, Chief Traumer. It's the Coppola, Coppola repairs up above wherever. Oh, yeah, Coppola. Coppola. So it's called, like a, it's, it's called the Coppola on the top of company one's. Uh, unfortunately, all the wood up there is rotted right now, so we have to replace that and uh, make it safe. So um, what we're going to do instead of replacing it with real wood, we're going to re replace it with uh, composite decking, which will last a lot longer. It's called AZAC uh, decking, and uh, we just have to take it down, redo it, and put it back up. So it's costly for a contractor to do that. Yeah, that's the major item under this one. That one is uh, in here for like 21,000, a little over 21,000. So that makes up a large portion of the, the 27 that they're looking for. Yeah, okay. Good. And the other item under there is uh, painting, um, doing miscellaneous painting at some of the different companies' offices. Well, then, okay, painting. When, where, what draws the line between maintenance and improvement? Where painting would go? Like which line item or you could, I mean, you could call it maintenance. You could call it improvement. Um, they don't actually, this is called improvement. You could call it facilities maintenance if you wanted to either way. I mean, what is normally for maintenance? Is that clean? So maintenance, maintenance would be for any of the uh, HVAC equipment that needs to be maintained, uh, electrical work that needs to be done, uh, lighting that needs to be replaced. That's all under facilities maintenance. Uh, improvements would be anything that we do to improve the building. That's how it's listed. Uh, so that's why painting was listed under improvements. I mean, we could list it under facilities maintenance. The other thing is under facilities maintenance this year, you'll see a slight increase. Uh, what we want to do now is go out with a, a contract service to do the HVAC and do on a a yearly basis that they that they're maintained properly with a contractor where in the past they've never been like that so that's why that you'll see that increase 
Okay, yeah, you. I can tell you uh, in this year's budget for the facilities maintenance, they have the ice machine service, um, HVAC, uh, company two door frames, um, and the, the bay door maintenance for all companies. So that's what they consider more maintenance. Um, whereas if you're improving the look and the aesthetics and the. Over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are we good, counselors, on this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to Fire Marshal. Okay. Um, Fire Marshal, uh, you see a light, uh, a slight increase under salaries. That's the current staff, their wage increase. Part time, this is where you're seeing um, um, a little bit of the bump. He's looking in part time to replace. Um, the position that was removed in the 20 uh, that was in the 2021 budget to have three part time people at 20 hours per week and two per diem positions. Um, he has the workload that can he said can substantiate this and that's what he's um, calling for. Mm -hmm. At 20 hours, does that include benefits or not? Yep. Thank you. At 20 hours, there's no benefits. Nope. And two and two part time. Two per, two diems, per, diems. Sorry, per diems. He started to use per diems this year, and it it seems to be working well. So a total of five people. Okay. Yep. Um, they have some slight under this. Um, he's, he's got increased to the conference and meetings. That's that's to help out with. Uh, he's getting additional staff, so he wants to make sure everybody kind of just stays up to date, and equipment maintenance. Um, I'm just trying to remember what he had over here. Maintenance seems a little old. Yeah. Um, oh, so he's getting equipment maintenance and technical, I can tell you te technical supplies. When he goes out, he was saying some of the critical equipment they need to perform the fire investigation, he didn't have. He didn't list what it was, but um, he did say there was a few things that they were looking for. When I looked down here, I know he had down there a CO HCN meter sure what that is um and other various supplies um to try to bring that up he did have down here that the conference meetings trains was reduced but actually was increased not reduced just so you know so if you're reading the thing um to to uh go with the staffing increase yeah. okay. uh, so as you'll see the uniform and clothing increased once again more staff um and the technical equipment did up, as I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks like we're good on that one. Uh, this is the fire safety officer. Mm, no real change. Um, you know, you'll see that the technical equipment went down. Once again, that technical equipment is just dependent on what they think they need during that year. So it will fluctuate up and down. It looks like... Um, <clears throat> They are looking to uh, the meeting sensors and the testing equipment being moved from firefighting technical equipment to safety. So they moved them over here. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Uh, no change to the regional fire training tower. Okay. That one is split, as you said, between Burling, Newington, and Weathersfield. No change to street lighting. That stayed consistent. And this may be completely irrelevant, so tell me. But the proposal for the radio system, which sounds fantastic, uh, CIP for emergency CIP. Thank you. Yep, okay. it'll be a fun day. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on giving you all these previews. I'm CIP. So excited! Oh my gosh! I can hardly sleep. I'm not going to sleep tonight. I, I can too. <laughs> um, yeah, street lighting, no change. Good. Kind of flat. Um, emergency management, no increase there either. Emergency medical service, once again, no change there. Um, just to give you a history, the fringe benefits, you see, those are the stipend payments we make out to the ambulance um, workers once a year. Um, the other contractual you see for 10000 is the amount we contribute to pay um, CMED. They pay the other portion. We pay ten thousand towards it. To pay what? I'm sorry. CMED is the a coordinated medical emergency director. And there it is. It says right there. <laughs> I just got to read it. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> I had to look up. I can't remember what it was. I, I keep forgetting to look up. Sorry. That's okay. 
Hydrants um, did have an increase. Um, the increase they increased their fee from 140 to 145. Just so you know, um, when I went to uh, MDC meetings, they're basically going to be increasing at five dollars every year. And we also had an increase in the number of hydrants um, they were saying belong to us. There was a slight increase also. And this is actually the first time why the New Britain um, had up their fees also. So that's the three thousand eight hundred. They maintain them or they <laughs> test them? Yeah. Once okay. a year, they're supposed to be over there uh, testing and seeing all our fire hydrants. I'm not sure they do it, but <laughs> they're, they're, supposed, they're supposed to be. And that concludes public safety, correct? Yes, that is the end of public Ooh, safety. Chief Trammer or Commissioner Whalen, is there anything else you wanted to add before we move on to the next section? Huh? Oh, no, I'm good. I appreciate all the hard work that uh, you guys do for us, and uh, we appreciate as much support as possible from you guys. And thank you, Janet, for going through all of this with us. I really appreciate no it. No problem. Thanks for your input and staying on so late. We appreciate it. All right, we're moving on to public works. Um, this is engineering, highway, and solid public waste works. service. So if you look at the personnel, engineering personnel has not changed um, from what was authorized this year. Okay. Engineering. <clears throat> Slight increase for salary uh, for current staff that's there. The part-time, you'll see 7,000. This past summer, um, the uh, engineer had a uh, internship. It was an unpaid internship there. But the program worked really well, and he's looking to actually have somebody come back as a paid one oh, cool. um, during the summer. So that's what that seven thousand dollars is for. I think it just, it's a great, really great program um, to try to sponsor and uh, give them a little help in there. Was this part of Keith's prop? Uh, this plan? was no. Okay. This was a separate one. I believe the student came from UConn. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but he did reach out to him. It'd be great if he could also check with Central right down the road from us. Um, and see if, if anybody there is interested. But it definitely, I don't think enough internships are done where people actually consider their career at the government, right. <laughs> a local government. So um, he suggested this to try to fill some of the hole of the permanent position he lost uh, to see if he could utilize it in that fashion. And, sure. and I think it's a great idea. Yeah, great. Cool. Uh, longevity is a contractual increase. And then he kind of just offset his dues and subscription increase with the transportation to try to come in as close to uh, flat as he could. Gary is on the line too. I just want to acknowledge that. Gary, anything you want to add? Uh, you covered it pretty well, Janet. Um, but yeah, we are, I mean, we are running a uh, pretty tight ship here. Uh, we are looking to uh, retain some consultants to move some of these projects forward that we have money for. So that's that's the strategy going forward. And okay. Would would this department um, I think would be responsible for administering and and fulfilling the streetscape projects, for example, that have been proposed. Yes. The grants. Mm -hmm. Gary's involved yeah. in that. If Gary's not doing it directly, we will look for consultants. Um, to do it depending on what his workload is. So if that seems to be a... a, a That's a low SIP stuff, right? Yes. I'm sorry. Low SIP. It low, um, probably says it right here, right? <laughs> it doesn't say what low SIP stands for. Just FY, so the streetscape projects, we have one in the north, I call the North Business District, which is um, Stoddard, Maine, and right. Hartford. And the South Business District, which is uh, May, um, New Britain and um, Maple Hill. Right. So those two, I have a RFP out on the streets. We just got the RFPs back last week, and I'm in the process of evaluating those RFPs for professional services for uh, completing those designs and uh, construction oversight. Exactly. Um, and you, so that's you, the status for those two projects. And you manage them, right? I'll be managing the consultants, yes. Okay. And you have enough uh, staff to do that? Enough man hours to do that? He's just said, I think you're, he's using a consultant. He mentioned. Consultant. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Good good Thank you. That's great news. Thank you. Okay. Good on engineering. We're good on engineering. Guys. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gary. Bye. 
Thank you. Um, highway, um, no increase to personnel, staying uh, flat to the number in this year's. Administration, they have a increase just for salaries. That's the um, contractual amounts. Longevity went down. Usually if you see longevity down, it means that somebody retired or transferred out. Um, everything else, uh, they kept flat. So mm -hmm. not much actually going on in that one. Right. Highway operations, same story. Full-time salary, uh, contractual increases along with overtime. And just a small rate increase for seasonal, $5, not a lot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> control, snow and ice control, um, same thing. Uh, Over time, just due to the increase in these rates and um, the increase you see in construction and maintenance materials is due to uh, the increase in cost for sand and salt. Mm -hmm. Any questions? We're good. Okay, Vios, vehicles and equipment. This is the one that um, you're going to see it. The, the the increase hit what we mentioned before, <clears throat> under motor fuel and, and lubricants, uh, the huge increase. That's one hundred and ten thousand that we're expecting mm -hmm. there. Um, under equipment and parts, you're also seeing an increase. We're, we've kind of been seeing it edge up this year, and uh, it's it's just the fact to try to get these parts and the rising cost for them has been incredible. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to have to probably, uh, we're looking within their department to see if we can cover this year. Um, I know that uh, Rob mentioned that they're going to come see me in the next couple of weeks about moving stuff around to cover where they're going to have an overage in that line within their department. So we are already starting to see that kind of come through. Um, Sorry, Mayor. I was just going to say, how confident are we that these figures, given, I mean, this book went out to print a while, but it just, it just a, in just a few weeks, yeah, it's been much the economic um, I, profile I, has changed. We were, they were kind of, we were updating this on the go on this one, and uh, we we have been keeping in touch with Hermes and, and Rob in the highway department. Okay. Um, I mean, there's several weeks yeah. left. So if you guys see that this trend well, we've is got, changing. We've, we've got until December that we're locked in. Okay. So they kind of built in the most pessimistic view going forward after that for the, okay. for the last six months. Oh, really December, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was we tried to be as conservative as possible in what we were forecasting. Okay. Thank you, Mitch. Did you have something else? Yeah, I'm good. I was just wondering if with equipment and parts, uh, equipment and parts. Do we ever do any bulk ordering of the most commonly used items with Weathersfield, Rocky, et cetera? Or is that um, not practical because each town's needs are unique depending upon the day? I, I don't know that they do, but it's an idea. It's to a good question to, buy them. to the town manager for sure. Yeah. I wonder if they have different trucks, since... but maybe, maybe you could add yeah. oil filters or I mean, oil. Uh, yeah. Lubricant. Add that to the agenda list. Yeah. <laughs> we got a long list. Yep. Um, for good on that one, leap yep. collection, small increase for overtime. Based on the salary rate increase, nothing else. Okay. And now we get to solid waste services. No increase on the personnel on this one. That is quo. You're seeing an increase under refuse collection, and that's just basically we're at the mercy of the vendors. This department. Um, this one, this refuse collection is not part of the agreement that they talked to you about the RFP. This is separate. This is trash away? This is, yes, I believe that's a different mm -hmm. company. From door to door. Yes, correct. So it, we're at the mercy of their rates right now, as you can see, they've gone up. So like bulk? No. No, this is just regular weekly this trash curb, pickup. This is door curbside door. pickup. Yeah. Well, I think trash away is the bulk pickup too, right? I think so. Yeah, but that's it's not paid for by us anymore. Right, we don't, we, so we don't cover that anymore. People right. do cover that themselves. Yep. So. I, missed, I missed that person. Um, the next page, this is where you see the, uh, the refuge disposal. This is part of the talk that you had regarding RFP. Now you'll notice we had a $109,000 increase. Um, when I, I can tell you, just to put in your mind, when we're talking budget, when they originally got the RFP and what they were proposing to you, uh, Rob did let me know that if 
um, we went with a proposal, we could actually reduce this by 118,000. So I think you're pretty aware of what's going on with these rates after the discussion. So I'll just leave that out there. This is a chance for a future change. Okay. Whatever you guys just decide when the RFP is finalized. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And recycling, you'll see here, that's an increase once again. Um, this is the curbside collection and that's a rate increase from our vendor. That recycling, I'm just saying, uh, that's the wild card mm. as we consider moving forward. Okay. All right, and the last section for tonight, planning and development. Planning and development, town planning and zoning commission. Zoning Board of Appeals, Building Department, Conservation Commission, and Economic Development. Good pages. Right. No change to any of their personnel. The numbers are kept flat this year. But I will say we didn't build in here, and I'm I'm just putting out a suggestion. I think it's something we need to do. And when I look at the building fees, I'll revisit them too. That um uh, the building director had been speaking to the town manager, but it didn't get into the budget. I told him, you need to make sure I'm in those meetings too, Doug, or we'll never remember. And he goes, yeah, um, that with all the new buildings going on and the economic development, he's going to need some assistance. Mm -hmm. So um, for at least this year, we were considering it saying that we want to put in some contracted service or part-time money in there to hire some some outside people to do some inspections. That amount, if we added it here, could be offset because I also talked to Doug about the money. Um, I'm going to be raising up the amount I'm looking at for revenue coming in because he went through the projects and when he expects to receive these building permit fees, and that will cover definitely cover us putting in some hours here. Yeah, you give us a recommendation um, down the road? Or? Yep, I, I will sit down him. And, and this is also, um, just so you know, uh, in the town planning area too, as we're going through this, they might need some. So I'm looking at putting it into a contracted services and we'll use it for both areas to try to keep up on all this. <laughs> um, he, Doug is going through his list and finalizing what he's gonna see. And so as the town planner regarding increased fees. So um, I didn't have that in the original revenue projection. So nicely it, it will have, and we're planning on a zero. They're saying it should be a zero impact to the total. Okay. Um, planning and development, um, as you're seeing here, you're seeing just full-time salary contractual increases. Longevity went down. Um, once again, somebody retired or left. Uh, dues and subscriptions, um, she's seeing an increase in that for a, a couple of areas that she's trying to get some training in also. And there's a decrease in the office supplies, but it's actually flat to this current year. Just so you know, we moved some money over into office supplies. Um, she did within her budget to try to uh, cover uh, phone charges. Um, prepaid phone that she uses every month. We're trying to see if we're going to replace that in the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, town planning and zoning commission, small increase. Once again, that's a rate change. Um, the hourly rate change for the part-time person, 399, nothing else really going on there. Everybody's good. Mm -hmm. Spiel for me on zoning board of appeals because it's a $62 increase, rate increase um, for the part-time person. Okay. Building department, uh, you'll see the uh, salary increase there. That's for the contractual amounts for the full-time staff that's currently there. He was seeing some um, increases in dues and subscriptions that he uh, wanted to try to uh, cover. You'll see it's kind of flat to the current year because he did a, a budget transfer within his. Transportation is flat. Um, 
to the current year, and so is conference and meetings. It looks like a decrease, but if you look at the original budget, they're all flat numbers, along with clothing allowance. Okay. We're good on that. Mm -hmm. And broken record on this conservation commission uh, slight increase for wage increases for the part time person. Okay. And under economic development, there was no change to this for the dues and subscriptions here at all. Okay. Development commission. Last but not least. Last but not least, that also uh, had just a slight increase, once again, for wage increases for the part-time worker. So that concludes the budget presentations for this evening, counselors. Do you have any questions, comments, concerns at this point? I know it's a lot to digest. We can always bring them back yeah. to another meeting if we have them. Yeah. Any other questions, please feel free. We're and be sitting down doing this a couple more times. So um, be more than willing to look in and, and get any answers that you're looking for. Thank you very much. Would you let us know if we have to add those part-time positions in at some point? The, oh, for the building, building and, and, and yes, uh, yes, planning. yes, definitely. Um, I'm going to be uh, hopefully talking to them tomorrow to get a better idea of what the amount they're looking for. They're expecting. But you said it would flex. mostly be an offset by, by offset. raising raising the. the yeah. The so their fees should offset anything um, that we plan to well, put in yeah, for expenditure. So yep. When he looked at what we see coming in building permits, we had kind of used an average, and he's like, "No, you can you can bump that." And I'm like, "Oh." Good, great. I, I didn't, but yeah. all right. Janet, thank you not You're only welcome. for your work on compiling this budget and getting everything together, but for taking the lead on this presentation tonight. Greatly appreciate that. No problem. As I said, it was a lot easier when I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to find clothes that were appropriate for in person meetings. Oh, it's very my husband's like, you're, you're, Where are you going? I go, I'm going back to the office. He goes, No Zoom. I go, No Zoom. Yeah. No Zoom. Oh. No Zoom. We're no Zoom for you. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to be in person. It's a nice thing. It is. You haven't yeah. changed much. No. <laughs> you got more gray. No. Yeah, I got more gray. Yeah. All right. So, folks, okay. we are going to move on. Next item. Get, uh, oh, I'm I, sorry. I need to get a copy of Section 4. My book is not correct. I got a duplicate public works. You know what I'm going to do? I'll just give you mine. And I'll get another one. Aha. Look at that. Easy fixes. Yep. No. I mean, I know where the... <laughs> I've seen this way too many times, so you can definitely. So you need you have a duplicate. Of, you need this section. I said the minute improvements. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> I want to put it past. You. I won't try logging in twice on the system. There you go. All right, and you can the keep the extra these. section. Yeah, I is, just want to make sure that you know I'm looking through it. I'm like going, wait a second, we already talked about. It. So if you have any questions on that section, if you review it because you didn't have it in front of you, just was, forward questions. Yeah, I, yeah, there wasn't much change going yeah. on there. Okay, all right, guys. So we'll move on now because we have a item left. I will give kudos to the rules uh, committee for moving those action items up great on the job. agenda because now we don't have to worry about great, that. Great, great job. We're amazing. Great job. Ah. So now we can have unending meetings. Um, yeah. <laughs> raise. I think so. 10% of zero. Written and oral communications from the town manager. Did he provide anything for us this evening? Nothing for this evening. Okay. Next is council liaison and committee reports. Councilor Nagel. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, Krog met. And uh, during their meeting, uh, one thing they uh, uh, pushed, uh, asked uh, for us to uh, support a, a letter requesting uh, the legislature to move ahead with finishing uh, the rail line from Hartford to Boston, which will help the whole route, including uh, uh, Newington. Um, also, um, we had a, a guest, uh, Mayor Stewart, who is the chairman of the chairperson of, uh, of CROC, um, uh, presented uh, one of her staff from, uh, from New Britain, Mallory Dupre, to talk about an elaborate opiate recovery program that New Britain has developed uh, over several years. I won't tell you the, the details about it, uh, but it is a multidisciplinary approach using different departments within, uh, within their town. They're willing to share all the details of that with surrounding towns, because we all know that uh, while uh, the opiate crisis uh, is one that is not, just not limited to 
to uh, urban um, areas. And uh, this information is passed on to, uh, to our town manager as well. Uh, there were TIP projects that were passed having to do with electronic updates to parts of Fast Track. It's just the general thing, not just Knowington. And also a TIP project that is general to the Hartford area having to do with improving uh, for the uh, CT, uh, DOT, uh, improving highway safety in uh, the greater Hartford area. And that is it. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Nagel. Any other counselors with Council Liaison Committee reports? Deputy Mayor Bedrako? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Actually, Councilor Rada and I attended both these meetings, so I'll speak on your behalf if you have anything else to add. Um, I'll, I'll just chime in if I need to. On economic development, as I alluded to earlier, um, the Chamber of Commerce was there and they said the state of the town is going to be March 30th um, at 8.30 in the morning at Indian Hill. Um, the Chamber of Commerce Awards Banquet Dinner is going to be May 18th at Indian Hill. And the water festival is scheduled for September 24th. Do you have anything more on that? Only, um, well, Renato comes to the meetings. She did a very good job explaining her role. I think uh, there was some question of does she report? Does she provide a report? What does she report? Uh, so she, uh, you know, made her role clear in terms of. Um, participating in economic development. And, um, you know, Gail, you made uh, a good point during the meeting that, um, you know, we don't always know until we see an empty storefront that a build, that a business has left. So talked about, you know, maybe having some updates on that and being a little more aware, um, keeping track of, a, of vacancies and building reuse. So um, that's all I have to add for that. Um, also, on the TPZ meeting that we both attended, um, just for people's, uh, there was an approval of a kind of new apartment complex at Payne and the Selly Road. It's going to be 151 apartments. 10% is going to be set aside for affordable um, affordable housing. And um, this uh, complex is very near Stu Leonard's and the Turnpike and um, What's the, what's the one near Stu Leonard's? Uh, Best Buy? Best Buy. And um, well, that whole shopping more, complex yep. there. And, um, you know, the the, the uh, proposal was promoted as, um, you know, people want to be near, near retail and near shopping centers. And um, so I indicated, well, you know, since that's so close, so what about sidewalks to get them there? But it was... Um, kind of dismissed and said that's not relevant and let's move on but anyways um the it was approved uh unanimously yeah one of one of the i mean i actually went back to the minutes mm -hmm. to look at, at some of the comments that were made and um, one was um i've yet to see any sidewalks on Payne road currently uh don't think i've seen any on maselli well yes because up to this point it's all been industrial uh, but now we're talking about um, development, you know, bringing in individuals and touting the fact that it's, you know, close to shopping areas. Well, do you get in your car and drive around the corner or do you make it walkable? So, you know, we've, Gail and I have talked about this and to see if there's some way that we can bring this a little more to the forefront. Um, when new development is being proposed, that um, the area becomes more walkable, more user friendly, more resident friendly. Um, so that's and and it and it was essentially dismissed. And I think part of it was that um, they were asking for it was a special permit or just what, the particular type of presentation they were doing, but. Um, it was dismissive and, and I think that it's something that I don't know how we as a council can begin to address this, um, but I, we wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. Actually, um, now that we're talking about it, and I know it's late, but I was wondering if um, on a future agenda, we can have um, a discussion about development in town because um, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned, quite frankly, about uh, 
the next couple of years, very, very short term, if all these um, developments come to fruition, there's a thousand plus that we know about. And then even today in the budget presentation, now there's probably gonna be how many more on top of Cedar Mountain. Um, there was something in the budget about a couple of other residential areas being looked at that we don't even know about yet. So that's gonna be added to the thousand. Um, and no one is going to convince me that these people are not gonna have cars. So we're gonna have, let's say 1,500, you know, 2,000 more apartments. That's gonna be more than one car per apartment. I'm sorry, I don't care where they're located. And we're not even talking about transit-oriented development, you know, sites that we have yet. Um, all the traffic studies, okay, so you've got 150 here, traffic study done, no impact to the neighborhood. 200 here, traffic study done, no impact to the neighborhood. 300 there, traffic study done, no input to the neighborhood. But you've got the, the, all these, you know, 1,000, 1,500 cars. Yeah, maybe separately to the neighborhood, there's no impact, but they're all gonna be using Cedar Street. They're all gonna be using Willard Avenue. They're all gonna be using Main Street. They're all gonna at some point converge. And no one's, I wanna know if someone's looking at the um, cumulative oh, effect, yeah. the total <laughs> cumulative effect. And this also includes sidewalks. If we're talking about, um, you know, attracting young professionals or families, blah, 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 but you've got these isolated islands where you can't get from one to the other unless you get in your car, um, you know, what, what I, I just think we need to stop and think, looking at our PLCD, um, we're, we're, we're building these apartments, but we're not building new roads. These people, these, these cars are all gonna be in our, <laughs> on our roads, trying to get through Cedar Street, May Street, and Willard, whatever. Um, they're all gonna be at some point, you know, using, it's, it's just gonna be a mess. Um, what about, even in tonight's um, budget thing, it said the um, fire department, um, they're gonna need new equipment because some of these apartment complexes are gonna be, three, four, and more stories. Yeah, they, I, they, need, they need to yeah. be able to reach at higher so, elevations. I want to know that someone is taking a long-term impact, not just spot here, there, there. What is Newington going to look like in the next couple of years, particularly when we're talking about TOD as well? Um, mm -hmm. You know, with the sidewalk grid, the, the, the uh, the road grids, the traffic, mm -hmm. um, the, well, another, the another infrastructure, question. the um, the police department, um, sidewalks, schools, you know, schools. the schools. I mean, we've got a, a thousand, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand apartments. That's a lot of people coming into town. Well, something that's that's come up consistently, and I think uh, it, it it first. The, the question first came up, or at least that I heard, was in relation to um, Culver Street, was when these traffic studies were taking place in the midst of COVID, when there were fewer cars on the road generally. So, you know, that was the other question to, to be asked and, and needs to continue to be asked, is when are, they when, when are the studies taking place and do they need to be redone now that we're seeing greater movement? So I think if, if you as a comprehensive too, yeah, and, and not it, just and it, neighborhood, and it's not, it's, 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 right. it's fragmented. So I jotted down, I, I'm using my phone, but I was jotting it down on my agenda list. <laughs> I promise. I have my list on here. Thank you, Alexa. Um, and uh, so I jotted down the topics that you mentioned, um, but if you want to shoot an email either to myself or the town manager, just kind of you know, listing the things that you um, want covered so that he can start to work on that in some way, shape or form, getting some information for us. Mm -hmm. We could either do it as an agenda item. He could send us some information to review and then consider how we want to move forward. But um, I think the first step would be to shoot that out. Since well, we can hear it if, it if we get together and have a conversation yeah. and we'll put something together. I think as a council, we need to have a conversation because, and believe me, please, on whoever's on Facebook, I am not recommending this, but actually town, um, South Windsor, I believe, has their town council is having a um, moratorium on new developments in town exactly because of this. They're, they're being overdeveloped. The, these developers are coming in and boom, 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 boom. And every, you go to Southington, you go to Newington, you go to South Windsor, you go to Meriden, 
you go to West Hartford, you go to Glastonbury. Oh, young professionals want young professionals, young professionals. How many young professionals are going to be like coming into Connecticut in the next couple of years? I mean, every community is being told young professionals, young professionals, young professionals. There's a glut. There's going to be a glut, at least in the Hartford region, if not whatever. And we really need, I think, to seriously see where we want to go. As a, maybe we want this. Maybe we want this. I don't know. But let's have a conversation. More intentional. I, more it's intentional. getting out of hand. Um, not out of hand, but I think it's straying a little bit from we pride ourselves on being um, single family owner, occupied community, blah, 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 suburb. That's changing. The, the numbers are going to switch real quickly if we don't say, hey, is this still what we want? Or maybe it's not what we want, but I think we need a conversation. Well, it could be developed in an intentional way, addressing some of the issues that we, we've just raised. I'm worried. <laughs> Very valid concerns. I'm glad you guys brought it forward. So let's, if you can put that in writing just to make sure we don't miss anything, I jotted it down a bit, but, um, and then we can certainly decide where we want to go with it. Very good points. I agree. So, any other council liaison committee reports? Just, it was just a question. I had heard that the uh, parade committee met. That's not a parade for this year, is it? Yes. So we're going to have a Memorial Day parade? Yes. On what's the date? Because NCTV needs to know. Yeah, twenty eighth. I put on my other hat. So what was Saturday? I I serve on the parade committee. The parade committee it did meet. We are having a parade. Saturday. Same, same, same place. Same, same, same marching. Okay, because I got to call the bank and get my space and all of those. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was. Because somebody asked me, I said, "No, they can't be possibly trying to throw a parade together for this year." Surprise. I've been wrong. That's great, though. I'm glad to hear we're moving forward that we missed it tremendously. Yeah, they're actually going to add some new stuff to it this year. I think they're going to be cool. You're going to juggle. I'm going to juggle, yeah. Okay. All right, folks, we're moving on to public participation. I'm going to click over to the attendees window and see if anyone raises their hand. And we have Miss Lyons with us. Go ahead, Rose. Ah! I did it again, Rose. I'm mute again. I'm sorry. We pushed it at the same time. James was sitting there like this. He's like, not me, man. Yeah, there's I'm an 76 year, I'm 76 years old. Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. And I'm trying to watch on television, but the sound on NCTV is not good. And I want to speak, so I'm on the phone. And you're muting me and unmuting me. You are messing with my head. But I'm so sorry. You'll pay the I, I price. I'll just stay. If I'll just stay <laughs> next time and not come home. But then I won't have dinner. I won't get the dishes washed. And I won't uh, have the clothes cleaned for tomorrow. In any case, Gail, thank you very mind. much. What I see on my yes. end is an ask to unmute button. So I always try to hit that. But as soon as I hit it, you hit it <laughs> at the same time. So I apologize. Not a problem, Beth. I know it's all <laughs> something new for everybody. But, uh, Gail, thank you very much for bringing up what you brought up tonight about what's going on and people uh, on various committees and commissions. I get where they're going with this, and they want to get things through, and they want to lower our taxes, and they want to do this, and they want to do that. But we have to look at the whole picture. And I think that because you go to so many meetings, and I watch a lot of meetings, we see this like a, it's just going full speed ahead, like a, a train going through town. And I'm afraid there's going to be a wreck one of these days. But I'm just wondering if we couldn't have a town hall meeting and not just, you know, people on Facebook discussing what they think, maybe face to face with the counselors at some point in time. I don't think the town council has any control over TPZ. At least that's my understanding. They do as they wish, which I get it. But. Thank you once again for bringing it up. Uh, as much as I don't want to watch this meeting over again, there was just so much discussed tonight. I can't imagine how the new counselors are feeling. This is, like I say, about my 15th budget uh, meeting or for fiscal year, 15 years I've been watching this, and it was just very fast for me. Uh, just quickly, the website, I don't think it's a matter of the departments and what they have on their individual uh, pages. I think it's a matter of how people can't navigate to get into where they want to get the information from and it not being readily available. 
Uh, I just mentioned that the sound on NCTV was not good, and it's a shame that we paid the kind of money we did. Right? Maybe we didn't pay them. I'm hoping we didn't pay them, and we still can't get a, a decent sound coming through. Um, it's uh, the, very, very the, NC, disa- the NCTV okay. problem is a, the NCTV problem is a Cox cable problem. That's uh, oh, I haven't Cox. been able to re- I haven't been able to okay. resolve it yet. Okay. I'm here. That that makes me feel better. I guess. Yeah, it's not, we're uh, getting it clean from here. Um, the other thing is you're speaking, I can hear everybody speaking over one another, and I don't know whether the microphones have to be muted or if that has to be something that James has to do, but it gets to be a little confusing when you're watching or listening, as I am on the phone. Uh, very disappointed in Mr. R. Carey that he couldn't listen to our pleas that the town council, our volunteers that spend many, many hours at that table can't have a, or couldn't have, some sort of a little room where they could have a, a, a refrigerator and microwave or something, or something to just have some refreshments in between, take a break and just walk around for a little while. This is only the beginning. Um, <laughs> the consu- <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm here sitting, having my water and nice and comfy, and you guys are sitting there. Be careful of what you ask for. You may just get it, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, the grants that were talked about that we need to now get consultants on, was that planned on to begin with? I know you can't answer. I'm just wondering if maybe the town engineer can come and give an update, even with the rotary. I'm hearing different things over on Fen Road. I see James. I'm in the red, so 30 seconds, and I'll say good night. See you at the next round. All right. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. And I don't see any other hands up, and there's no one in the room for public, so we will continue on to remarks by councillors. Anyone? Councillor Page. I know it's late, so I'll keep it short and sweet. I, um, by my rough math, the amount of money that the town manager proposes we cut from the superintendent's proposed budget is approximate to the amount that would be cut in the mill rate. And so I need to double check my math on that. I just wanted to say that I I don't remember in my lifetime, and I'm 60 years old, a a time where our schools have been under as much duress and stress, our students, our families, our teachers and staff. And while I'm not advocating right now for any specific number, I do want to, as I know all of us do, want to listen carefully to what the superintendent and other leaders in the Board of Ed have to say about the needs of our students. Um, We have reading scores. If you look, look at the New York Times today, Um, There's a good article about reading scores dropping um, across the country in ways that we've never seen before as a result of COVID and people not, the children not being engaged because they've been at home. Um, We've got mental health crises going on with our kids of historic proportions. And I think we need to be very, very thoughtful about how we move forward with the allocations to the school budgets. And I recognize that fuel prices are going up, my heating oil, my gas, Mm -hmm. everything else. It's outrageous, the inflation. So I am also sensitive as a guy who pays bills too, that I'm not proposing we give away the store, but I think we need to be thoughtful on how we balance all these competing needs. And that's what I want to do moving forward between now and April 19th. So Mm -hmm. thank you, Mary. You're welcome. And everyone, thank Thank you. you. Yeah, I think I don't think you're uh, alone in that. I think that as we get more information from all the departments, but um, uh, the Board of Ed also, um, I had mentioned earlier when Janet was presenting too, there are still some possibilities for reductions on the Board of Ed side that oftentimes come through during the process. So there may be some room there um, to to consider if that comes down even a little bit more. So um, I want to get the updated number because and she said it was in here. I haven't looked um, yet at what the updated Board of Ed number was that they requested after they made some cuts. And then we'll see tomorrow, they have a meeting where there could be some more, um, we'll have to see over the next couple of meetings kind of where that ends up, but um, some thoughtful thoughtful processes in, in our next few weeks for sure. Yep. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other remarks by counselors? Okay, we'll continue on to informational items. No informational items for this one, but we will be sending out an email to all department heads so they can supply information, such as a parade upcoming or other events that will be happening. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, if we're done with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second by Councilor Mankey, seconded by Councilor Donahue. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. We stand adjourned at 1048.
And James, thank you, thank you, thank right, you. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next one. It's no fun being home. That's, okay. that's yeah. one okay. is that. Come on down, Sharon. Come on down. Come on down. All right, well, all right. See you at the next one, guys. Gail, yeah. I can't thank you enough for your comments. I mean, I'm, we all here are totally for you to have to go.